Hey superstars, happy uh, happy podcast day. Fuck off Siri! So that just happened. I don't really, I don't really want to edit that out. That was actually pretty funny. Um, so so here's the deal. Today's a bit of a today's a bit of a special day. It's a it's been a long time coming. It's been the it's been the plan or the goal uh, over the last twelve months. Uh, for those of you who don't know, if you don't, you probably need to listen to a few podcasts. But if you do know, last about twelve months ago, I set myself a goal. Uh, this was a goal that for me felt a long way away. It felt like it did. It didn't seem like it was unachievable, but I knew it would take me to the edge and take me. To probably outside my comfort zone uh, at times, and it's something that certainly did. This was a goal that both scared and excited me, a goal that uh, when achieved, uh, I knew would be something that uh, would be I'd be able to look back on uh, and know that I'd be super proud of it and know that, know that it would have enriched my life significantly throughout the time. Uh, today is that magnificent day when I get to achieve that goal each week. For the last 52 weeks, I've released an episode of this here podcast, uh, and it feels pretty good. It feels very, very nice to be able to say that I achieved something I set out to. Um, I think I have a heap of people to thank, and I'm not going to go through each one, but uh, if you... I do a little scroll down your podcast list, uh, all of those amazing people that I've been able to speak to over the last 52 weeks uh, have all contributed to this enjoyable experience. Um, it's definitely something that has made my life better and I hope it's made your life better as listeners. Uh, it's, it's funny, the podcast kind of started out as a way to help other people. I figured that <clears throat> if we could get some cool people together to be able to share their experiences, their wins, their losses, their dreams and hopes and triumphs and all that kind of stuff that uh, those who listened might be able to gain a little bit of inspiration uh, from it like I had listening to a, a lot of podcasts um, over the last couple of years. But for me, it, it, came, it became much more than that. It became a, a weekly self-development tool Um, for myself both personally and professionally it kind of became an avenue for me to meet new people uh, to connect and to lean on amazing people around me uh, and amazing people that weren't around me that I got to uh, I was introduced to or I'd met through people who I interviewed or um, through people I knew who knew uh, other cool people and it's something that now looking back 12 months on, it's definitely challenged and, and definitely changed some of my beliefs. It's brought new people into my life, uh, some of whom I'm lucky enough to speak to and talk to and uh, lean on every day. Uh, selfishly, I guess I can look at it and think it's probably the best, one of the best things I've ever done for me, even though I initially, initially started out <clears throat> um, doing it for unselfish reasons. It's there's on the weeks where uh, I struggled to uh, find time to get a guest on, or um, struggled to find time to upload the podcast. It was definitely that selfishness of wanting to achieve the goal uh, and wanting to challenge myself and wanting to push myself that probably got the episodes up. Um, and I think that being selfish is really important at times it allows you to grow and in turn when when you grow you you have more of yourself to give to others um which i think is pretty important and i guess reflecting back now 52 weeks on the hardest part of the whole experience was probably getting started i it was last uh last queen's birthday i think just before the football was about to start and i was sitting in the office debating on how I should start and when I should start or if I should start and it was something that I've been telling myself to do for ages and I kind of just went now nah, stuff it plug the headphones in and recorded a 13 minute rabble that gave no value of anything to anyone uh, but <clears throat> I'm pretty proud to say that uh, over the last 52 weeks I've kind of learned how to have a conversation I hope 
you guys can tell me that if I have or if I haven't. Um, but I think that positive pressure of putting the episode up and saying that I was going to record 52 episodes uh, before I hadn't booked anyone in for episode one, which was a bit silly, but we, we got it done. That positive pressure has kind of allowed me to, or for, pardon me, forced me to make time each week to find a guest, sit down, record, edit, upload the episode uh, that would add value to the people who were listening and to the people who were involved in the conversation. So I guess the <clears throat> it's something that looking back now, it seems like for me, and it is, and it seems like a big, big goal, but at the end of the day, uh, the power came from being able to break it down into week by week and episode by episode and guest by guest, um, and it turns out that it's a pretty simple process to just focus on one thing, tick it off, and then move on to the next thing, and I think that uh, ability to just do that has turned something that I doubted for months before I actually started doing it to something that now I cherish being able to do this do this each week and being able to sit down and talk absolute rubbish for an extended period of time with people that I love. So now that the goal has been achieved, uh, nothing much changes. I will reassess, I will recalibrate and I've decided to move the goalposts a little further away. Um, 52 sounds cool. It was a uh, well, there's that many weeks in a year. It's a good number. Uh, that was my football number as well, which I just realized. Um, but I think 100 sounds better. So my goal's changed a little bit. I'm going to hit 100 episodes and then see what happens. So over the next 48 weeks, uh, my plan is to keep finding new cool people to interview. But one of the things I'm going to do is to going to dive into some topics uh, with some awesome people. Um, I've had like, guys and girls on a few times, people like Simon Cooper, the great man, Tommy Turlak and, and Palsy have been on a few times. So I think it's, uh, it's a good way to change tact a little bit and dive deeply into some issues or topics that might be... Um, might be a part of our general conversation day to day. So that's the plan. 100 podcasts sounds pretty good. Uh, but for now, we have episode 52 coming up. Uh, it's called the birthday episode. Happy birthday to the podcast. Uh, the plan for tonight, for tonight's episode, I'm going to sit at a table with uh, a handful of my favorite people in the world and we are going to talk about, well, I don't actually know. Uh, we might talk about achievement, we might talk about business, we might talk about life, we might talk about ducks, I don't know, could be anything, uh, which is kind of exciting. So I hope you enjoy the rabble that is to come. Thank you to every single one of you guys who have listened to the podcast over the last 52 weeks. Uh, it's been an awesome ride so far and I guess the cool thing is, is we're just getting started. So that's it. Enjoy. My personal and business goal is to be just a little bit better every day. I believe everyone, especially normal people, have a story to tell. The Virtus Podcast exists to help us all find small ways of consistent improvement by discussing the journey and experiences of each of our guests. I've not, Save it for the podcast. I've, <laughs> I've not edited one podcast except for. Do you know how to? No, that's why. <laughs> it's, it's not the fact that. And you've made it to fifty-two podcasts. I have. You I can outsource that. Yeah. Yeah, but like you money and stuff. Business. Yeah, business is hard. <laughs> well, you're about to learn what being tight on money's like. Frugal. Frugal. Yeah. Yeah. What yes. happened today, mate? I uh, put an offer in on the house, but Get I said that last the... time I was on podcast that nothing happened, so. <laughs> <laughs> it no, could so, be bad so luck. You just jinx yourself, Stryker. Pretty much, yeah. 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 The, whole, the whole podcast no where it's things that you <laughs> have have Yeah, planned, exactly. So. so they don't know what happened. No. What, what happened, mate? Fill us in. Why is this Fill about us, me? Phil, it's your podcast. This is about you. Well, what? Back on track. So, introducing the the Pulse Bell. 
Every time, every time Moo decides that uh, we are talking rubbish, he will press the bell. Uh, he can be overruled by Sam, but he has to do a honk. Can you give us a honk? Honk. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. That's pretty good. So we're uh, here for podcast number 52 with uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, six of my favourite people in the world. I nearly bought seven curly whirlies. You guys would have loved me. I should have done it. <sighs> Wowzers. I like uh, when people so, announced that they didn't do something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm off you, man. That just, that just makes it so much better. <laughs> the I'm, I'm super salty on that, really. <laughs> to be honest, I don't hate it. So what we're going to do is we're going to go around, go around the little circle we've uh, we've put Willis. together, and talk about our favourite confectionery and introduce <laughs> ourselves a little bit. So, Mr. Simon Cooper, oh man, put me on the spot. <laughs> Tell Hi us guys, my name's Simon Cooper. You can call me Coop. <laughs> <laughs> You're a disgrace, mate. Oh, man. I saw wish yourself we, out. I wish Boys. podcasts like, were like videos. Did you know the show? Did you explain what this out of I should have filmed this. So Lachlan's just <laughs> taking a, a little sip of gin and spewed it right back onto the floor. I just coughed because what you said was funny and you're not usually funny. It's so. just my name. Oh. <laughs> it's like a backhanded <laughs> what, What's compliment. your favourite confectionery? It's not my favourite confectionery. <laughs> The biscuits count as confession. <laughs> <laughs> you are so stale. <laughs> <That's> so shit. <laughs> stale biscuits. Like, what, what, what biscuits. Are we talking like Savoy? I'm talking, I'm talking like, 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 like Tim Tam. I'm, I'm hitting like Oreos. Nah. Uh, no? That's a oh, whole other field. Monte Carlo. Yeah. Monte Carlo. You don't like a Monte Carlo. Why are we like talking that? about our favourite biscuits? Monte yeah. Carlo's are a week. <laughs> Good palsy. Introduce a yourself, night. j Pulse. It's going to be a long night. No, wait. Uh, we should do a quick poll. What's better, Monte Carlo's or Oreos? Oreos. No, Monte Carlo. What's a Monte Carlo? What? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, we're, we're getting too deep. Into it. I can't this do it. This is ridiculous. Let's get back on track. Wallace doesn't know what a monkey Sorry, good. Anyway, confectionery. 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 All right, let's just go. Uh, dark chocolate. Okay, very good. Uh, I'm Jared Pulsar. Most people call me Pulse. Moo, Max. Max, Max, Max yeah. that's a freshie. Max, I get Max sometimes. Oh, yeah. I order like boost juices under Max and forget they're mine. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's outstanding. Yeah. Um, favorite confectionery? I uh, can't go past the Snickers. I reckon. Mm. Mm. That's it. Not you when you're hungry, Grant. <sighs> I'm always hungry, Grant. <laughs> well, you've already introduced me, so that's fine. I don't say anything. Um, I don't <laughs> like chocolate, so bang, moving on. Unless it's in a beer. There's other Pitch. though. Jerry Road beer. Oh, fantastic. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> three minutes, three 14 minutes. <laughs> Three minutes, 14 seconds. Samuel? Yeah, um, well, once again, I'm Samuel. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for introducing You're me. You're welcome, that mate. That was the one thing I was going to be able to do. <laughs> um, I'm a sucker for Skittles. It's a good, good, good convention. Yeah, great. Or... If I want to get a la natural, make my own roll-ups, real fruit, ah. flat out. <laughs> You're such a nerd. Why? Just buy delicious. them, mate. Uncle, Uncle Toby's is like a, a fledging Australian brand. <laughs> okay, whatever. <laughs> uh, I'm Tommy. Um, uh, you can't really get them in Australia anymore, but the Starburst jelly beans. Ooh. I thought you were going to say that oh, your yeah. favourite confectionery was a fit yeah. with Georgie. When I was in America, I was going to say, and I had them. What did she say? <laughs> Brand, I've got one for you. She'd no, make a Skittle brow like they did on The Simpsons. They did. This week, this, this, yeah, we got Gallows. Yeah, yeah. Dainton. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Huh. Dainton would. I didn't try it, though. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> that, that bell's going to KP, out. introduce yourself. <laughs> I'm KP. <laughs> Thanks. You're welcome. It's ruining it. My <laughs> favourite confectionery. I can't decide between two. Or no now for the Same old. Yeah, well, this is this is a little inside into my world. <laughs> Either red frogs, oh, the yeah. strawberries and cream, or gummy mm. bears. Mm. <coughs> okay, fair. Just give me a mix. And then that's my favourite. I'm Wallace. You guys know me. I hope by now. <laughs> if you don't, you've got 51 episodes of content to listen to. Favorite, oh, those red, licorice, like twisty, licorice long things. Mm. Really? They're not licorice, but they're. You get them cold. That's... I don't know what they're called. They're, they're amazing. Raspberry twists. Raspberry twists. Those bad boys. They're amazing. <laughs> Game changing. Twizzler in America or something like that? Mm. I think. Not, yeah, but they're different. I just feel like As you're a wrong. American correspondent, as you <laughs> 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 uh, yes. yes. Yeah, Tom went to America once. 
<laughs> what was it like? In, what What was it like in Alabama? I was never in Alabama. Didn't you go to Alabama? No, Alabama, Texas. Man. Texas. That's the real world. Texas. That's good. See, I told you everyone to stop talking when we... Well, you know, now you're supposed to introduce the podcast. You're the host. Man. I've already done that. Did you? Why are we here? Yeah, yeah, yeah well, when, you, when you say something like, this I'm is... Michael Wallace <laughs> and, you know, I'm about getting a little bit better every <laughs> day. <laughs> and I like to hear stories from, from uh, you know, and I believe that like the best the stories are the ones that normal like. people have to tell. You know, this is the Virtus podcast. You clearly you just know that. that. <laughs> 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 oh, that played, that played about five... That played about... Five minutes ago. Oh, that's, but oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm trying to save you some money. <laughs> trying to pay for the uh, the sound card, kind of like generic. Podcast. We establish you can't edit the. Uh... <laughs> I won't, I'll, I'll be, I might, that might be the first bit I ever edit out. <laughs> you singing that. Uh, yes, yeah, so we are here because that I, <laughs> I set the goal of setting, of uh, knocking over 52 podcasts. And this is the 52nd podcast. It turns out it can get worse as you go. Uh, I don't agree with that. that you had 52 podcasts because you had all those little beats. I've done more. So you've done more. So you're lying. Oh, no. This is the, 50, yeah. the official 50 seconds. Yeah, 50 seconds. This, this is episode not, not 52. Just talking. What happens the other ones? I'm now confused. No, in, initially at the start I did like a little Be Better series where I just talk they about sucked. it. A, yeah, they, they weren't great. Like, so I, I scrapped it. <laughs> you were really mean. Yeah, but the actual, the actual name Look, of points the for podcast trying. actually needed to be better, and though you didn't actually release it. No, no, no. Is that ironic? No, you're doing it for a while there. No, yeah. I was, I was yeah. doing... I, like I, I, was, I was doing like a... So, well, you needed to be better, mate. Correct, correct. Yeah. correct. Yeah. I was doing like a three to five minute clip yeah. in between yeah. episodes, just as a little like, a little pick-me-up, a little uh, tap up the bum, a little let's let's get moving kind of... Kind up of the bum, up the bum. Whatever floats you, mate. A little bit of column A, a little bit of column B. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, so that, they, that happened a little bit at the start, and then I kind of got sick of... Well, uploading them, uh, so I moved on and just did the one a week. And there were a couple, couple there that were a bit like special episodes, because like even the Simpsons do special episodes. So I thought I'd jump on that bandwagon. Halloween and, special, yeah, Halloween special. Three so we, special we've got the we've got the Christmas special, uh, Gin House of Horror, <laughs> <laughs> was where to- Tommy got cactus. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Spiky that desert dwelling plant like. Was good. We did well. And we did. Uh, I did a Are You Okay podcast with one of the boys, and and one of the guys I I recorded a podcast with didn't want to put it up. So, really, yeah, wasn't yeah. happy with the value he brought, which is completely fine, completely understandable. And here we are, week fifty two. What have you learned? What about? Oh, great question. Great question. <laughs> what have I learned? You have to drink. That's it. Yeah. Oh, that battles for a lot of different things. Yeah. So, what have I learned? I've learned how <clears throat> important it is to be selfish. Whoa. Explain. <laughs> Please <Discuss>. explain. <laughs> <laughs> Please elaborate. Uh, I I started the podcast because I wanted to I wanted to help other people learn from from other cool people, but I've found that doing this each week is one has kept me <clears throat> consistent with like one thing. Um, you of all people, Grant, know what it's like to have a thousand different things going on at once. So. <clears throat> it's taught me the importance of uh, being selfish in the goals that I set and the standards that I hold myself to. So I have to record one a week or I have to record a couple in a week to give myself a little bank of podcasts. Um, and I find that if I am doing it for the re- f- I'm, if I'm doing it because I enjoy it, which is a selfish thing, then I'm going to keep doing it and I'm going to want to keep doing it and I'm going to be able to add value through that. Yeah. So that's what I've learned, mate. What have you? What have you? Yeah. What have you learned from all of the ones you've listened to? (laughs) How many have you listened to? I don't know. Do you listen? You do. Yeah. 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 I don't read, so I listen. (laughs) Hundred percent savings. Why don't you audio book? I'm listening to. (laughs) Why don't you read? You just struggle to sit there. Just don't have the time. Yeah. I don't. I don't find the time. You have. Yeah. So you've got the the same time as everyone else. Yeah. Yeah. I don't. I prioritize over that because I don't like it. Yeah. Plus, you answer a billion emails a day. Yeah. So it's not because you don't have the time; it's because you don't like it. Mm. I like to like it, but yeah, yeah I suppose. <laughs> That's fair. You don't yeah, have to. Yeah, no, no, yeah. I struggled with wanting to read for like a couple of years and really wanting to read, and mm. then <clears throat> not not being able to commit the time to it. So I was like real shitty with myself for not being able to actually do it. Mm. And then podcasts. Joe Rogan came along, and that's kind of like started it. And then. 
something clicked like mid last year, and I'm just like, I want to start reading again because mm. I used to read heaps when I was a kid. But I reckon I'm Grant's on to something. Um, I reckon there's like there's a set of rules of you know that you have to follow um, if you want to be seen as being like you know someone who's doing the right things. You know you don't you've got to read. Um, you've got to be a morning person. You've got to do all this kind of stuff. But like, shit, man, if it doesn't work, yeah. why would you try and force yourself, you know, into you know a shape that doesn't fit you? Um, and I can have something hard to come to terms with because um, you know I open up a coffee shop. <laughs> I'm, I'm a night person, <laughs> which is possibly because of the coffee. But uh, <laughs> why didn't you open a bar instead? Well, that's a, that's a great question. I don't know. But um, but like, I'd come to terms with being okay with you know. Um, being who I am, you know, not feeling guilty that I get more yeah. work done when I'm actually not technically supposed to be working. Mm. Yeah, I um, think, yeah, I think it's really important to know what your what your frequency is, yeah. and to stay stay in that. Like, so so many people burn themselves out <coughs> trying, or to not. trying to trying to fit that bill of like people like Gary Vee and um, like Tony Robbins stuff are awesome for that motivation that drive, but. That's them. That's their. That's yeah, their level. Different types of reading too. You don't have to read a book. There's plenty of other sources of information. Yeah. yeah. As well. So we mentioned audio books. A lot of the stuff we get these days can be found on your phone and on your computer and these kind of things as well. So here's the thing that freaks me out. You can get any. <coughs> basically, yeah. Sorry, I just got a thought stuck in my throat. Get it out. You, you can get any like university or like degree, like online for free now. Like, any anyone there's um one of the big colleges in the US started doing it, like just putting their coursework up why do people still pay for university for the certificate so is that you seriously it yeah. why yeah because uh the workforce is still based off what your qualifications are yeah if you want to try and find work then you need to you know this is not this is a blanket statement it's not obviously for example any of it's about who you know, right? But yeah. a lot of traditional business well, some jobs, and yeah. corporate jobs, for example, you need to have a qualification, otherwise you don't have a chance. Yeah, as a minimum. Yeah. yeah. Entry requirement. Yeah. Exactly. It's really interesting. Do you think that's that'll change at some point where there'll be, I don't know. No. Uh, no? I think for some things it will, but for others it won't. Like, you're never yeah. going to be able to be a doctor because you're like, nah, YouTube the shit out of this. Yeah. 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 <laughs> no, but, but, but like maybe there ends up being like a... <laughs> I reckon it will because this I I can't remember what the stat was, but there was a statistic that a, like was a higher number of people never pay back their hex debt because they never they do. I'm that guy. They go to uni and then they don't end up That's in that profession and then right? they don't <laughs> go over the threshold and never never pay yeah, back their hex thing. debt. So I reckon eventually. Will that be just a change in the system though, rather than a change know. in the university system? But like universities are a business, right? Like before, be, they're a business before education. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. They use education as justification to make money. Yeah. So. But they are a business. Yeah. Correct. So are we going to get to a point where there's some sort of like online system with that that partners up with say hospitals for doctors and nurses or that partners up with. Um, coffee shops for barista training and things like that like it. yeah well there, well there you go like so is it that industries that don't have that huge level for a, for uh, entry are already doing it yeah I think so yeah no probably they are like I mean the best I would argue that uh, the sort of um, the TAFE or university it's not really university level but the TAFE training you can get the practical training um, barista training is probably lagging significantly behind the online resource that's cool. Um, like shout out to something like Barista Hustle done by um, a really exceptional barista, Matt Berger, um, and a couple of crew. Um, but uh, <laughs> they've just made a lot of tape. Yeah. Courses free. Yeah. Have they? Yeah. So yeah. being an election year, uh, the Premier of Victoria has come out and made this bold statement allowing access to certain up to 200 tape courses for free now. So I could be like a beauty technician for free or something? Technically, yes. Do if you wanted or to go PT, do your yeah. study, yeah. PT, yeah, if they make that free, fucking hell, we'll have the, the same issue we had 10 years ago when I became a PT where they're giving it out for 500 bucks for a salty? diploma. I'm not salty. Yeah. Apparently. 10 years, holy shit. What's wrong with it? Tell us why it's bad. Why, what? The ser- the if I want to go to a push-up, what, what, what happened again like, if they top top Well, I think subsidising a, a course like... Personal training, like personal training, the the industry's flawed or the 
That kind mm. of just ruins your whole argument you just made about the whole free thing because <laughs> you're going to let doctors no, get it for free. No, but no, but the the job in itself is flawed because it's it's seen as like a, a an easy job or a base level job, <clears throat> whereas and it is in certain aspects, but the the need to have a deep understanding of both psychological and physiological aspects of health, movement, performance, things like that. It's so deep. It's one of those things that I think needs to be, you know, it needs to be like a three-year degree as a minimum. Um, and that three-year degree, I would love to see it be a, like an online degree or something along those lines, like where you can apply what you know um, in the gym whilst completing that coursework because, like, unis are very th- theory-based. Um, a lot of coaches are very practical-based, but then they, not a lot of coaches mix the two. Like... <clears throat> Cam's one of our smartest coaches. I hope he doesn't listen to this podcast. He won't. <laughs> he won't. <laughs> We're not using the shout-out belt today, mate. It's, yeah, a, it's, a, oh, it's a back on track. No, back on track. Like yeah. <laughs> um, he's, he's one of our most intelligent coaches, and like he'd beat me in any discussion about physiology. physiology. See, that's why. I don't even know what it is. Physiology <laughs> or anatomy or anything like that, but he's done a Cert 3 and 4, whereas I've done a Bachelor and like half a Master's because... Well, whew, got out of that. Um, so I think it's it's the kind of it's a kind of uh, industry where as soon as you throw something that's really cheap and easy, people see it as a cheap and easy way to get into the industry, and that's why you know eighty percent of coaches aren't coaches in five years. Like they they're all moved to something else. Hmm. They um, use PT as a stepping stone. Uh, yeah, or as a part time job. And it's a sexy through. gig, right? Yeah, obviously. <laughs> well, that's the only reason I did well, it. <laughs> obviously. Yeah. But everyone looks okay. at it, looks at it, and goes fitspo and stuff like that. So, yeah, so. I don't know. It's I just, think it's changing though. Do you think it's the industry is changing? The industry's changing. So much of it is you've actually got to find your own business. You can't just go. Yeah. You can't yeah. just get a job and then go. Oh, cool! I'm working at this place now. Like a lot of it is, you've got to find your own clients. You've got to run your own business. To that's the thing. That's a lot of tech courses. Course, but it doesn't give you a job. Yeah, a lot of courses give you that basic business. Oh. <laughs> Good. Oh, Jetty Jetty Road. Road. oh my god, that sounded like a Jetty Road. Oh, Jetty nice. Road, always oh. be. Yeah, just another weekend. Oh, wow. How good. <laughs> so refreshing and crisp. <laughs> Back on track. So I, I think a lot of um, courses do give that base business knowledge where they're asked to create a business plan for their own business and do the finances and that sort of thing but that is like we said all theoretical still as soon as they're actually tasked with Mm. going out on their own and building a business they just don't have those skills they don't have the skills to market themselves I suppose it depends on the industry lucky it it depends on the industry you you wouldn't wouldn't want doctors and nurses as we've said to change what they do because when they come out and I've seen people come out of the Mm. university and you're like they are ready to go yeah Whereas you see an accountant leave, as I'm talking from personal experience, I've got a degree in accounting, but then you finish that job and you walk into a corporate in, uh, industry and you go, holy shit, I've got no idea what I'm doing. Yeah. And I had the background noise because I've done an advanced diploma and a diploma in accounting before I went to uni. And the stuff that I did at TAFE was so much better than what I had at uni. And that's- That's really interesting. Inter- yeah, that's, really that's, interesting. What, that's just what I'm getting. But then I finished my uni degree, was stoked, and then I went into the industry and went, holy shit, I know nothing. And it was back to the actual fundamentals and the physical um, accounting that I had to do in TAFE where I you know, knew my stuff. Yeah. But then on top of that, you have to get your CPA or your CA, or yeah. I think it's whatever they've changed the name to now, there's an IPA or something like that. But that's the thing, it's like you've done your degree, Best you plug you're, yes, you're done, but you ne- then you need to prove yourself again. Yeah. And you need to have that three or five years of experience. And I think depending on the industry, like the brewing industry, which is what I like to see, and I suppose it's a little bit the same mm-hmm. with what you're doing in the in the coffee roastering industry, is like you need to prove yourself and mm. the beer industry in my opinion is probably a little bit more um, what do you call it in the growth stages because most brewers don't or a lot of brewers that I know don't have a degree behind them but yep. they're fucking amazing brewers yep. and those breweries won't be good unless that brewer knows what they're doing and mm-hmm. if that's all about learning on the job and being good and having a passion for it so I depend, it depends on the industry I reckon yep. you, said, you said nurses though like they come out of uni ready to go but do you actually think they 
think they're ready to go? I don't know about a few possible. Well, there's pra- there's so practical like, element of their course where yeah. they have to do yeah. Yeah. Nice. Whereas nice. if you're doing an accounting course, you don't have to do an internship in accounting. Nursing is a bit like, let's normal course path would be 18 finished school nursing is only a three year degree you're 21 year old yeah. I know when I was at 21 I was nowhere ready to be in such a stressful environment that's true yeah. as an adult too so yeah. obviously if you've got I know what I was like at 21 there's no way I could have coped with the stresses that a nurse would have to deal with and true. I think looking at that from that kind of realm of things as well and mm. what KP was alluding to teaching to 22 years old yeah. you've probably done yeah you do like 15 weeks 16 weeks of placement I didn't feel that like I was ready at the end. Go. No, not we did all. the practical part. We did the four years at uni. No, not at I all. wasn't ready. That's I had to go do full time somewhere a lot else. Of, a lot of industries and a lot of uh, career paths, there's no like screening process straight out of uni yeah. to ensure that you are job ready. Yeah. You have the theoretical knowledge. Sometimes you even have the practical knowledge, but you don't have the maybe mindset or the uh, maturity to go into a full-time role and start working. Mm. So question then, what's more important, experience or education? It's both. Does, does, education, does education get you the experience? Because, I mean, there's people that don't have That's, a degree or education. but they're We, we have some, they're some interns come in who don't, like, they don't know what the upper dorsumist connects to. Like, hello. Just made up. Yeah, I just made that up. Um, <laughs> upper dorsumist. <laughs> right. <laughs> but but, but they can, like, go through, like, some, like, the most intricate... Uh, like spreadsheets around programming and around periodization, mm. but they can't teach it like a basic squat, right? Or they can't connect with the person that they're coaching. Yeah. Right? That's yeah. another element. Mm. But that, I think that's where education will... Um, that's the realm that it will move into, where there is the education component and there's the... Transferable skills. Exactly. And I the people yeah. skills and... As an educator, I think we'd let our kids down. We teach too much content-specific stuff, and yeah. rather than that, I'd like to see us teaching transferable skills and stuff like that. I think we've spoken about it at the podcast yeah. numerous times yeah. as well. Mm-hmm. One of the questions yeah. I've been asking lately, <clears throat> and it'd be cool to get like a one a one subject answer from each of you, is mm. if you had to go back to school, what subject would you would you add to the curriculum? Because like for me, like my answer. I've been thinking about it each time I ask it, and I think my answer was something along the lines of of self awareness, gratitude. Um, I don't know. Is that a subject? Oh, fuck yeah. Do you think the ca- I kids could, I are too young to? I think I don't know, maybe teach that at yeah. like VCE yeah. level. I think, for example, yeah, definitely. I think parents try and teach that all the time. And it's so just, I think parents you don't, don't try and teach that. <laughs> <laughs> Are you reckon? No, I think a lot of parents don't know how to engage with exactly. a generation that is so, you know, that, that is always going to be different from theirs because that's yeah. sort of how it happens in the cycle. 100%. You know, you see... You how see, many times do you hear parents say, be grateful for what I've done for you or be grateful for... Yeah, but that's not... No, but that's, that's, that's not teaching them, no. That's, that's not gratitude, mate. When you get like, <laughs> <so laughs> <when laughs> <you're> like 21 <laughs> or whatever, you start realising just how good your parents were. Like Lockheed's but, saying. But yeah, we talked about it the other up. night, you know, like... By the time you've figured out your parents are right about most things, sometimes it's too late. Um, and it's I really think insightful. That, um, and I, oh, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, insight here. Yeah, hundred. Insight, don't get it. Yeah, I kind of say, I, I tell my kids like, as you're a teenager, you want to spend less and less time with your family. You want to spend yeah. more and more time with your friends because you've got some independence and yeah. Yeah. you want to get away from that authority kind of thing we all kind of phase we go through. And then once you kind of get through the other side and then you decide if you go to uni, start your first job, you tend to always, you start to realise, as Sam said, you lean back on your parents yeah. more and more so as you get older circle. and stuff. It comes full circle again where you, where you rely on them a lot more than what you actually thought you did. Yeah, uh, it's, really, it's really interesting. Like, like if you could throw a subject out there, what what would you? Trigonometry. Use it every day. Prove it. <laughs> no. I think philosophy. I'm similar to you, Lucky. Like I would probably mm. treat teach people philosophy, but a practical one. So it's not so much you know. Let's talk about Descartes. And, you could know, you talk about like maybe critical thinking? And yeah, stuff. critical thinking. Yeah, and lateral <laughs> thinking. You know, the ability to sort of take a step back and view the world with perspective <laughs> rather than through your narrow lens. Um, but then. That you know, comes it's, with it's the experience, right? It's, it's like, tough. Yeah, experience. it's it's an experience-based thing. I think you you understand it more the more you kind of experience it. But introducing it at a younger age would be good because I would argue that most people are introduced to that 
if they're lucky enough to go to a university and kind of um, and, and have that kind of tertiary education experience. But I think it's something that's universal, and it doesn't have to be academic and dense. It can be re- relative and kind of practical. Yeah, I feel like uni kind of teaches you to be a robot, though. Like mm. it teaches you to learn the content, tick the boxes. Like if we had a Is that bat- what you teach? Yeah, basically, if we had a bat- bachelor of like learning how to brew beer. Everyone I'm sure there is one. I'm not very interested. Every, everyone would end up brewing the same beer, right? Yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah. So like, there's no creativity. Yeah, so I think that ability to... like, I don't think I... But don't you think there's a, a place to learn, I don't know, the regimented yeah. structure yeah, of that to then know and understand that and then go your own way? Yeah, 100%. And I think... That's important. And, like, that's... if Like, I think maybe we're... <clears throat> Maybe we're kind of asking the wrong question and maybe uni is just that stepping stone to that next step where you understand the basics and you, and you can do the requirements of your job and then that creativity and that adaptation to be like, I don't know, a leader in your industry or whatever comes from actually applying it and actually doing it. Mm. Like, you still need to address it though through education. Mm. Yeah. And make them aware that this isn't just... When you go into the workplace, you're not just following these this structure you're following these rules it's broader than that Mm -hmm. and then you have the ability to build something that's yours it has to be another path because I'm finding with the guys I teach at the moment they're very short short focused so instead of uni yeah they don't they don't care so the rate of kids going unscored and then not having to do exams because they see it as an easy way out happens (laughs) it's happening more and more and more Mm. it seems they've got the VCAL pathway which is more trade based yeah path and then you've got your VCE which is set up to for people to essentially go to uni but there needs to be somewhere in the middle where they can yeah. kind of just for the kids that don't know what they want to do mm-hmm. get those skills that are not academic or anything like that that they want to be the doctors if you want to go down that path fine we'll yeah. create a pathway but it needs to be something in the middle where we could probably teach all these things which would be beneficial. What do you think will happen if like there was no uni though? Like if there's no uni what would it do to all those lower income jobs that people do because they didn't go to uni. Like I don't want to like it's like I don't want to say a job because I don't want to insult anyone. But if you like think about it, the lower income jobs are usually the ones that didn't go to uni. So if we change uni, then yes, it will change all these high. Like it will change for nurses, it will change for teachers, it will change for PTs. But what will it do to the lower down income jobs? Well, I think they're going to stay. They're going to be there regardless. Like all the all the service jobs that are the backbone of our economy. I think is the words you're looking for. <laughs> <laughs> smooth, smooth. But so, like, and like, I really like the way Palsy put it. Where, like, it's almost like we, we move, we have <laughs> something in the middle. That welcome to my life. <laughs> yeah, good. We have some. We have, we have something in the middle that's like I don't know, almost like the, the creative, uh, like entrepreneurship kind of, kind of tack, like way to way to go. Well, there's three business owners here. How are you hiring people now? Are you looking at Tertiary education. That is a great question. Really topical because we just... The three of you that are business owners, what requirements are you looking at now? You guys go first. Grant first. Oh, shit. Well, I haven't employed that many people, so it doesn't matter. I think it's a little... But going forward, like, if you're hiring more kind of management... Kind of more... (laughs) Oh, another Jetty Road. Oh, Jetty Road. Down the track when you start growing and you need to put people in with more kind of responsibility than, say, hospitality staff that you are... Currently employing, which are casual and that kind of thing. We answer really for question. More... I, I don't honestly don't know because I'm clearly going to have to start putting those people on yeah. and require, or they have those sort of degrees. But yeah. it's not really a huge waiting on my opinion. Yep. It really, I mean, it looks good. So I think that maybe may, might be I mean, I'm the gonna, answer to some degree. I, like I mean, if I, yeah. the new business owners are not looking at those things so heavily, yeah, and are actually looking at tangible experience and things like that and value add to the business in other ways, then you went and took three, four years out of life to go do that instead of three, four years knuckling down, working, learning, growing you a business. You don't know which way it's going to play out, I don't think. Like, I, I went I went straight through uni. I only did two years of uni because I had previous education. I didn't do the full three years. And I got to the end and my uni, and I suppose it's just a personal opinion, this is my experience, so I don't know whether everyone else has just been given that step up, but I had no internship. So I came out of uni fully with a, with a good degree stoked for it to work and I had nothing because I hadn't done any experience so I couldn't get a job in Australia so I went to Hong Kong and I wanted a job there because I was desperate and it's like when, where's the support mm-hmm. and so I'm, I'm talking on a personal um, side of things so when I got back 
from my holiday and from my trip to Hong Kong to work, I was looked upon as like, oh, you've had an experience, you've gone out and you've done some different things, we'll employ you now. I was like, well, how the fuck has that changed who I am and what my education basis is? Mm-hmm. But it gave me a job. So I don't know. It, it suppose it depends on who that person is and who's hiring. So I don't look that favourably. I thought, fuck, if I was employing a, a doctor, I'd be like, right, what's your profession? <laughs> you but get? if I've got a sales doctor bloke, if I've got a, a sales a job. Bloke, <laughs> who's got no, educa- no education Besides, I don't even care if it's VCE, to be honest. It's like if you guys are if you're smashing down the industry and you're, you've are you got a reputation and you've got referees and I call you at them and they're like, mate, he was the best worker I've had, killing it. And the guys, that, the people that he's been working with sounds good. Well, why wouldn't I give that person a go just because they haven't had an education? Mm-hmm. And if they're willing to, you know, jump on board part of the culture, put the time and effort in, understand what we're doing and nail an interview... Why the hell wouldn't you give that person a trial? So I don't know, but that's just my... That's, just my that's a really good question because I know yeah. two of the business owners here are hiring at the moment, aren't they? Great plug. Do <laughs> you, you want a job at Common Folk? <laughs> I need, a, I need yeah. a business development manager if anyone's There you go, looking. three. All three of you are looking. I've got a bit of time free, so I'm happy to help. Yeah. <laughs> Look for someone, that's a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, like, because we, we just launched our, like, our kind of recruiting campaign, if you call it a campaign, but our recruiting drive today. Um, but what are, what are your like views on it? Like, what do you look for now? Yeah, this is really interesting, and I guess we're um, common folk, which is the business that I um, help run. Um, we're in a bit of a different position than maybe a couple of businesses here because we're relatively established yeah, and, and small business. And I think that <laughs> it is true. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we have a I can't lie. It's so smug. I love it. <laughs> well, you know, like we oh, are well, competed, you know, well deserved. Two proud. other businesses in the room to win that oh. trophy. So, <laughs> Dagger. That's just the fact, guys. Um, no. <laughs> this is what science says. Hey, the, the, the up and coming business of the year, Jenny Road. Yeah, you hey, yeah, we won't yeah. fuck all. I won't even be applying it. <laughs> oh, wait, what were we talking about? Recruiting, yeah. yeah. Uh, we're in a, no, we're in a different Fuck position um, to, to, to some in the sense that I think that we've become uh, not just a business, but a destination for people in our industry, especially on the peninsula, yeah. um, which helps a fuckload. Um, and it's because of the hard work of the team that like, we've kind of got guys like Tommy and, um, and you know, like uh, Shannon and uh, Phil and the crew that are working back. Mostly in Shannon, probably. Oh, yeah. mate, seriously. But, like, working really hard to set a culture that people want to be part of um, because we've got a reputation for whatever it is that we do, which is mostly make coffee and make it well. Mm. Um, but if I'm employing people, experience is obviously important. But genuinely, character is probably the number one aspect. So I want people who are willing to learn and willing to work hard. Mm. Um, but once again, like Graham was sort of saying, we're a similar industry. Um, you know, beer, coffee, it's you know, it's a beverage and we're kind of hospitality, we're service. Both delicious. Yeah, both delicious. Hell yeah. Um, yeah. Um, we, want, we want people who are, um, who are trainable so that they can kind of figure out what we want to do. But also, um, uh, we kind of want to hire people who are... Uh, willing to sort of get down and dirty. I don't want yeah. a barista to come in who thinks that they're a rock star, but um, but only just wants to make coffee because that's only like I don't know thirty percent of the job. The other six seventy percent. Oh shit! <laughs> See, trigonometry. <laughs> you know, that's stuff. <laughs> that's not trigonometry, mate. Oh, that's that's basic maths, yeah. basic addition. <laughs> not gonna lie. Not gonna lie. That's basic. Oh, maths. Geez. And I have a science degree. <laughs> anyway. Um, <laughs> Uh, it's yeah. it's sort of less relevant when really what you need to be doing is like clearing tables and being yeah. engaging with with people. Um, and actually, you know, it probably would would be quite similar to your experience with Virtus. And so, in the end, I want people who want to be there. Um, <laughs> yeah. I don't want to hire someone who thinks that they're the shit because how do you I don't es- need someone. how do you establish that? Like from a like a formal interview, do you guys looking at? I ask trial? a lot of weird questions. Uh, yeah. 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 Um, in fact, it's funny. I deliberately get people to come to their interview at Common Folk, and then I tell them we're walking around to the office. And the bulk of my interview I do on the way in what appears to be a really casual Informal. conversation. Yeah. Um, and so I ask sort of oh, questions that I actually want to... Oh, <laughs> if anyone listens to this. Yeah. Um, and I actually ask them the questions that I want to know the answer to, like sort of like, oh, what did you get up to on the weekend? You know, like, oh, how's work been? Oh, what's your current boss like? All that kind of stuff. And then when I get into the interview, I talk about their favourite hospitality places and whatever experience they have. But really, I've probably already formed my opinion on whether I'll hire them yeah. based yeah. on how they were as a person because that's the experience that their colleagues and their customers are going to get from them. Um, and we can teach them how to make coffee. Um, as long as they you know, they got half a brain, I can teach anyone how to make yeah. coffee. I like that you do that because I know in interviews I just freeze. Mm. So if I was doing the casual walk with you, I would be fine. Yep. As soon as I got into that room and the door shut, I would be like, 
<laughs> What's my name? And I find that often as well. Like, it's, an interview in hospitality is useless. Like, it's way better to get in for a trial yeah. um, and see how they actually respond because, you know, it's uh, in the end, you, you're doing something quite practical. Um, mm. So I don't care how you yeah. present when you're sitting down wearing a, like, suit and tie. So, yeah. you know. I, I think that's really, it's really interesting hearing you say that because... Like I don't think we've we've talked about staff a lot. We haven't never talked about uh, recruiting staff, yeah. and that's very like pretty much <clears throat> the same process that I'd go through or am going through yeah. and have been through. Um, you saying thirty percent of of coffees, cleaning tables, and doing all the shit stuff like. Yeah. You're just saying in the gym, yeah? Putting well, yeah, away weights, but like you know? 30% of any... Wiping the walls of chalk? Yeah. <laughs> Does anyone do that? Yeah. <laughs> We're working on that. But I think 30% of any job sucks. Like, it like, doesn't matter what job you do, 30% of the job sucks. Yeah. 30% of the job's fucking awesome. And then the other 40%... 40%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Frank see? Uh, Matt. I wrote that down and hold, hold up on me. Pulsey, Pulsey's got a piece of paper and he's writing the numbers <laughs> down for us. But Good yeah, educator. And, and, and that 40% is the stuff you've just got to do, right? That's not bad, it's not good, it's just you've it's just, just got to do it. It's glamorous stuff, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, and like that glamorous stuff's the five, like that little 5%. And I think <clears throat> my way of talking, like you're, you asked that question, Pulsey, my way of talking about that through interviews um, is you like pre-frame all the shit stuff first and you talk about, okay, here's all the things that suck about our job because most people who come into a new environment look at all the good stuff and don't really pay attention to the shit stuff, get in and go, oh, it's all going to be like this, but it's not. So I pre-frame the fact that we have like early morning starts, we have like late night finishes sometimes, like we sometimes we don't have time to nap during the day for three or four days and we're doing 16, 17 hour days and sometimes we've got to cover people that we don't <clears throat> or cover sessions we don't necessarily want to cover. <clears throat> we get home late and don't see our friend, like our friends and family as much as we, as we would like to because the nature of the job is it's like busy mornings, busy nights and you're getting all your admin done during the day. And I think if you can pre-frame all the crap stuff, then all the good stuff, like you don't have to talk about it because yeah. it, it's there and they know it's there. Um, so our like the first thing I look for with a hire is someone like you said that just wants to like wants to be there yeah. like we'll run through a big brick wall to spend time with you and with the team and, uh, and it doesn't coincide with I think any formal education no. necessarily <laughs> no. Yeah. no it's just it's about the character yeah like out the first first part of our interview we've got so we've got a like an online fill out questions we got questions like what's your philosophy um, if you could have one song that every time you walk into walk into a room plays every single time for the rest of your life, what would that song be like? What's the best answer been? Uh, well, we just put it up today, so we haven't had any answers. Oh, okay. um, but get on there, guys. But if it's not hooked on Nervous a feeling, don't bother replying. Be interested to see how many actually reply with hooked on a feeling. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it'll be at least this. Is um, <laughs> and and just questions like why Virtus? like why like and why now and um what was the, what was the last one? Why question should be would you be on my podcast? No. Nah. Um, All right. Well, we discussed that today with uh, someone and I was a bit disappointed that they weren't. Oh yeah, yeah like podcast something you got to earn, and you guys have all put in the legwork, and and you guys have all done really well to get on it more than once. So cheers to you all. Um, but our so once once they get through that point, it's the first step is a cultural interview. So it's do they fit our culture? Do will they f- be a part of our team? Because like I'm not interested in anyone that wants to be the rock star, like like the Tommy T of of of, uh, of your business. Guilty. Guilty. Um, and so, so if they don't get past that bit, they don't, they don't get to the the second. They don't get to the second round, which is the like, can you do what we do and do it well? Would you have that interview if they didn't have a degree? Or yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, cool. yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, would you? Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. So I mean, we all almost agree. Yeah. That we would, but I feel like it's important to say too. The three business owners in this room, we're all working in relatively well, yeah, easy, yeah, was, easy entry sort of um, industries where I could hire someone to, you know, to clean floors and wash dishes. Mm-hmm. And, um, and you know, like the, obviously there are more advanced jobs from there, but it's not like we're hiring someone where there is a minimum requirement. Well, here's the thing. If I'm hiring a physio, right, like, well, like they, except, they'll, yeah, they'll, they'll right. have to have a physio degree. Yeah. Like it's just, it is what it, it yeah, is. Yeah, it's like a is. doctor. It's yeah. like a lawyer. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't know. I'm not, a, I'm not a solicitor or a lawyer or whatever. I don't know whether you need McGrin. that. We can yeah. call Dan McQuinn's yeah. stat. <laughs> yeah, um, that's true. Well, then again, having coming from the accounting background that I have, I would employ someone that doesn't necessarily have a uni degree, which where I don't think a lot of businesses would. 
Yeah. But, but they just can't sign their stuff. Yeah. yeah, exactly. But most of the time, you can get away with. I mean, that's just because I know how well, it works. Work. But at the end of the day, like. Just because, I mean, if you come up from somewhere and you have a shitload of experience, it's not I'm bringing someone in from just nowhere. Yeah. If you've got experience, I'll probably have a chat with you. Yeah. If you're a pinhead, it's going to be pretty evident pretty quickly. <laughs> yeah. Great use of the word pinhead. Great. Outstanding. I have, I'm, I'm getting, sack, mate. I'm, I'm, I've only hired one pinhead and he needs to clean the walls a little bit more. <laughs> oh, I love that man. Yeah, come on, Coops. I love it. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Jokes. Jokes. Yeah, but it, yeah, and it's, and it's really it's like there's jobs that you just have like have to have the yeah. the uh, thing. But at the end of the day, it's we hire on person first. Mm-hmm. Um, skills you later. Have to have that well, that's the thing. Yeah, it's, yeah. That it's, piece of paper. It's, but here's the thing: just be the guy that starts the business and hire people to go a piece of paper, and you're sweet. Yeah, start the business and then hire the people that are better than, than what. Why what did you two do? start a business? Shit, I don't know. I don't know. It's a question. I think you guys. Like, you know, wow! I don't know. Like, yeah, holy crap! I don't know. I'm obsessed with business. Because my business, my I love, business I love, coaches... I love, small, I love starting business. I love everything about business. I love collaborating with people and bringing people together. Yeah. I think that's what it is. Yeah, good. That's a simple... I what don't care what business coaches is. ask me I today. love beer. Yeah. I love hospitality. Yeah. I love bringing people together. I think that's half of the, the, mm. the way business runs as well. So I think that's where it's coming from. But again, if I started another business and if January was successful, and not that I'm looking at doing things, but I just love the idea of yeah. creating something. Yeah, yeah. so... And I reckon it's like, ditto that, but I think I came into it from oh. the point of like more on the, I love coffee and I, love, yeah, yeah. I want to control it more and then fell in Passion. love with the business and empowering other people. And it's sort of funny too, because I think that through that, I probably tried to, oh no, I think inadvertently I've surrounded myself with people who also love to have a bit more control and love to kind of, you know, have more insight into what they're doing. Like um, Tommy's the classic example. I know that he wanted to come and work for Common Folk, not because I'm a stand-up kind of guy because I'm probably <laughs> not but actually because he knew that he'd have an opportunity to really imprint onto yeah. what he was doing um, and, and I think he has I mean I attribute a lot of what we've done and it was the culture time, like, yeah. there's other businesses that I could have worked for and Made got more paid money. more money like I had offers for other money but the culture of Common Folk and what the business stood for and who it was and what its identity was as a business was something I identified with and thought was way more important than I don't know, chasing success. Yeah, because like money. Tommy, you and Coop are two people that <clears throat> obviously like work for the businesses and with with us. But w- like, is that the reason why you didn't go and do it yourself? Like, because you're two people that I don't know, don't I, I think you could both you, you, you could both it, yeah. run your own business. Like <laughs> <laughs> Simon <laughs> Cooper, <and> Tommy, <laughs> Simon Cooper, Tommy T partnership. Uh, you heard it here first. Ooh, Scoop. Um, I've been asked before because I've had aspirations to start my own stuff yep. but um, I keep kind of saying the same thing that I haven't found any ceilings or limitations on working with Sammy or anyone at Common Folk yep. in their management team. Um, I feel like I treat Common Folk as my own business so not in a way of like entitled and... But that's what you want, right? Like, like a jerk yeah, but I, I understand that there's costs and things like I'm not just willing to go spend Common Folk's money for no reason or... Yep. I kind of have that critical eye and thought process behind everything I do um, because I want Comfort to succeed. And until I get to the point where Sam's saying no to my ideas or things that I think are valuable for Common Folk, um, I, can, I can't see a reason to leave. How long have you worked there? Um, on and off. Yeah. So <laughs> I, started, start, I yeah. started from the start and then my other employer thought it was a conflict of interest, so I had to stop working at Common Folk, but still kind of did. Yeah, a little bit, um, and then Sam was like, "I'll get you back here one day." And it's been nearly two years. Yeah, nearly two years. Is that it? That's crazy. This second time. Two <laughs> yeah, years. but it's he's kind of been part of the furniture since. Yeah, and even when I was days. away, I was yeah. still around, and yeah. yeah, I still felt like Common Folk was. But he's the kind of employee you want. He's the kind of person who you'd hire, and he'll say no to me, um, which is actually key because. <laughs> Like, I'm a pretty big personality and I'm happy to kind of push things through and try and get my own way. Um, but that's not going to work out if you're running an organisation that employs, like, 65 people yeah. and has, you know, multiple venues and, you know, three year. different arms. <laughs> <laughs> you actually need well, yeah, people who You want to be developing leaders as well, right? Yeah, well, absolutely, yeah. And you need them, like uh, I think it was Grant saying before, who are, you know, you kind of want to be the dumbest <laughs> person in the room. Yeah. Um, and so... I usually am. Yeah. I mean, I'm not allowed to roast coffee anymore. Well, you're not tonight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Sam's not allowed to roast coffee anymore. Did you just point at KP? No, I did not. <laughs> Honestly, I did wow. not. No. Honestly, <laughs> pointed at me because Grant's smiled at me. 
What about you, Coop? Um, I think yeah, I, what you're saying because I, I mean your job is on. Fuck, <laughs> 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 I'm in a job interview. We have Simon. Um, well, oh, don't you fucking Thanks, good roaster. Right. That's, that's my yeah. boy. <laughs> I mean, he can barista. Hey, I barist. Hi. He <laughs> previous wife, gun barista. Stop it, Simon Cooper. Look out. I'll take him. Yeah. I'll swap you. I'll swap you. Come forward, Tommy for Coop. We can have some fun. Soft oh, Tommy T. We should like, we, we could like do like, cool. like a, a weekly swap. Exchange. It's like it's like it's like a wife swap. I reckon Tommy's strained enough to probably know how to half run a session. Mate. Half a time. No, it's, it's, it's more the back of the house stuff I need your help with. <laughs> Coop, talk to me. Um no, I, I completely agree. I started working with Virtus. Obviously I've been when Did you started Virtus. Did you have an Virtus, interview? No. Pardon? You didn't have an interview. We had coffee. Yeah. We had coffee, yeah. Mm. Wait, where was it? Uh, we went to a uh, flock uh, down at Dove Fork Drive to get around it. Um, yeah, they, <laughs> ser- they serve delicious common folk coffee. You're welcome. Good coffee, thank you. Fantastic coffee. <laughs> I started working there because I believe. Yeah. Not last though. No Jenny Road. No, fail. Sort of. <clears throat> Sorry, Kurt. Continue. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> that was probably a bell. Try three. Just back there. Okay. I started working there because I believe in the in the vision and the culture. It's not because I was desperate for work or desperate for money. Um, like I'm, I could do other things, and like the reason I'm, I came back from the UK was to pursue other things. I didn't come <laughs> back to start working at Virtus, yeah. even though I did. Um, but yeah, that's the reason I wanted to get involved. Is because locks locks created a culture. And a place where there's constant improvement, where people you're helping people to be better, you're making the world a better place. And that's the vision, um, and that resonated with me. And I am fully invested in that. And um, yeah, I, I, I mean, I love working there, and I love balancing that and other interests and other relationships. And I think it it strikes a chord with me, and I'm happy doing it. And that's why I got the job. Yeah, basically. That's why I kept the job. Yeah, it's not like a good coach. Hey, it's not that. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but, yeah. and and that's like, and that's if, like, hopefully the two or three or four guys we we hire over the next two or three or four months. All girls. All girls. All girls. Yeah, guys, nice. guys, inclusive. guys is he, guys is both, man. Mm. Should we talk about gender equality? Oh, and oh, the, the new shit. books. I'm out. But, oh. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> good. Um, I, I, like that. That's. Coop is one of the people that you look at as as an as an employee or as one of, a member of your team, and you look at and go, okay, like I want everyone to have that vision and that mindset and that ability to look at the Virtus as something that's growing and something that needs to be needs to be fed with energy and and love and something that needs to be uh, it's like a garden that needs to be tended to Ooh. very regularly. Um, that was much better than what I was going to say. So we'll just <laughs> I think Tommy and, nailed it as well, saying that. You take you take ownership of the business. Yeah, it's not just Locke's business. Mm. On paper, it is, mm. but it's mm. my business as well, and I'm contributing towards its growth. And if I drop the ball, then Virtus will drop the ball. Yeah, and you'll sure as hell never get anywhere if you treat it otherwise as well. It's sort of exactly. funny. It's like um, I think about all the staff I have, and and like a, like a really high number of them, almost to the point where I'd say all of them. Um, you know, treat common folk in some way as their own. Yeah. And it's something that I kind of, I feel like people in general might kind of feel like that's too much to ask from somebody. Or you can't ask your staff yeah. to do that. But I kind of kind of throw back at them, like, why would you want to work there if you weren't prepared to do that? Like, I don't sure as hell don't want to work somewhere where I, like, I resent the people who are employing me and kind of want to do a half-assed job yeah, and 100%. can't wait to, you know, for the school bell to ring at the end of the day so I can fuck off. Welcome to my world. We'll talk about- <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to load up on some questions. I'm about to load up on some, right. some questions. Talk to us, Palsy. <laughs> so, so, like, Pulse and KP, like, it's cool because, like, we've got a 33-33-33 split of what people are doing. Like, Seven people, mate. <laughs> 
I'm just guessing. <laughs> Apart from Thank me, you, because <laughs> as as the host, I am uh, oh, I'm separate. Uh, separate. So, let's <laughs> dig up, stupid. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> so, Polsey and KP, you guys are working for the man, trying to make the world a better place. Yeah. Within a system that. All woman working for the man. All woman. Oh fuck me. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, you can work on that, please. Sure. It's 2018, come on, like, let's just... Let's yeah, exactly, just... Exactly, <laughs> exactly, no, no, exactly, no. mate. Let's call a spade a spade. <laughs> That's exactly what I was going to say. <laughs> Shit. Dig up. Yeah, <laughs> fucking keep digging. <laughs> um, you guys basically... Yeah, good. You guys, like, work for the man in a system that was created before you were, like, a part of it. How, how does that affect your ability to make a difference and do what you want to do? The way it's structured is so hierarchical that great word um, that it is hard to foster any change from an entry level. Yeah. Um, you have the ability to do it within the system if you can start at a smaller school and build yourself up quickly to then have power to make decisions. Unfortunately, in education, people are there for a long tenure, which is not a bad thing because experience experience is a good thing in our job. But yeah. the way it's set up and the way it's structured, it, it, it makes it it makes it very difficult to um, set out to do anything new, exciting, change the system because all that's obviously dictated by the government. Yeah, yeah which is which is the frustrating frustrating component of the job. Yeah, one of the, one of the things Greg taught us a little while ago. We did like a speaker school where it was about <clears throat> um, getting your message across, and the origin of the word education is to adduce change, and. It's really interesting to one of the things I try and ask myself every day is is are the things I'm trying to teach are they actually making a change and are they changing behaviour? Do you find some days or some times the system works against your ability to make that change? Absolutely, yeah. Definitely. There's certain boundaries that you have to, yeah, you know, or there's certain holes you have to fit through before you can make anything happen. Yeah. And there's a lot of boxes you have to tick that before you can actually get to the stuff you really, really want to do. Yeah, so, um, yeah, this makes it extremely difficult. But if you can get through to one kid, then I think you, you're doing your job as yeah. an educator. If you can change or open their perception to something new or have a conversation to them or just change the way that they're, they're thinking or yeah. foster some form of change, then that, that's a positive day. Do you want to be a teacher forever? It's a question that I ask myself a lot. And I, and I battle with it a great deal. Yeah. I feel sometimes yes and sometimes no. So I, I definitively I can't say that I want to. The, the stupid thing about education is that the more experience that you get, the more time you get taken away from the classroom where you're most needed. So where the, <laughs> that's like yeah. a lot of jobs, Where the, stru- where yeah. the structure yeah. that yeah, you exactly. are. That's every yeah, career. That's, yeah. yeah. That's, that's so long. the better teacher you are, you become a leading teacher, you become assistant principal, you eventually essentially become human resources manager or a yeah. business manager where yeah. you're not actually teaching and you kind of lose track or lose touch of what is actually happening in the classroom. But you're, te- but you're teaching started. teachers, right? Like if you're in that those positions? Not or is necessarily. there some positions you're nah. no. managing the school. You're managing yeah, the school. You're a business manager. Yeah. You're it's human like resources you, manager. Do you think it would be better than to have but it, but it, um, principals as being someone with like a, an MBA or something rather absolutely. than yeah. actually being educators? Yeah, There's no, that's really You're running a business. You're not yeah. running... Same as universities. Right? Yeah. yeah. You're, so, not, you're not running... You don't have, you're not teaching yourself. And then have your really senior teachers on a similar pay packet as, say, a principal... Um, especially ones that aren't teaching teachers, yeah, but they're yeah. not—they're not tied down with admin and all that kind of rubbish. Yeah, yeah. I, was, yeah. I was having a conversation with. I think some schools have started to go down that path. I think there's one or two that have looked That's at that, and, and it's worked. It oh, I don't know the know. background, but I have heard that some schools have gone down that path, or working cool. in conjunction with the principal rather than yeah. trying to release him to do things. Yeah. To, yeah. Um, it's really interesting. One of the conversations I was having with one of our mutual friends, Aaron Kellett, was around. Like I was talking to him about how everything was going like the first time we'd caught up in maybe two months and I was just throwing like throwing all the stuff at him and I was like you know what I'm like really struggling with the the move away from coaching and the move away from just being with a client one on one like because that's like that's my jam right that's what I do um, like you used to make coffee back in the day apparently um, <laughs> you used to be you good you used to write numbers and, oh. and stuff down <laughs> we'll talk about we'll talk about your ability to make coffee in a minute Tommy um, but 
one, of, one of the things that came up, I was like, I kind of miss coaching. He goes, yeah, but you're kind of still coaching. I'm like, well, what do you mean? He's like, well, now rather like rather than just coaching the individual, you're coaching a group and a team and a and a, and, a, and the the Virtus family is a collective. And I, I kind of thought about it for a little bit, and I kind of liked the way he put it because it made me feel better about myself for one. But <laughs> it made me realize that I wasn't actually changing what I was doing. It was like completely. It was just adapting the way the way I was coaching. Um, and, I've, and I found that really, really interesting because I think if you, because I can still look back, look look at my days and go, yeah, well, I'm still being true to my mission and true to our values and true to our vision of of moving forward, improving people one one person at a time. I'm just overseeing it rather than doing the the grunt work and the groundwork. Do you find there's a level of like progression with teaching where you stop doing that? where you just focus on the business of the school and the running of the school? There's the culture in teaching is the more experience you get, the more you're expected to do. Yeah. And with that comes uh, positions of responsibility, which then essentially take you away from face-to-face teaching. Yeah. So yeah, it's really interesting. If I was to ask, the majority of people that I work with that are around my age and who I've known for a while will have the same answer to this question. They love being in the classroom. Yep. It's the other, other shit that they struggle with and probably drives teachers away. Yeah. So question, and I suppose this is, well, you alluded to it before, I'm going twofold here. Does the structure of how your uh, career unfolds represent how kids are educated? Oh, because if you're following a regimented way of going up the line, moving away from something yeah. you want, you, you actually entered into that career because you were passionate about educating yeah. kids, you go to a managerial role, yeah. where is that opportunity, which is what you alluded to before in regards to that area of change or you know creativity that kids don't get at high school or primary school? Where are they going to get that if you guys are all regimented in this Pushing structure? The system. Ultimately, yeah. it's your personal decision, Yeah. but the... the the pressure from the system is for you to jump up the line. And if you yeah. want more money, if you want... Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's stuck in it. good so thing about education is that the way it's set out, the money comes with experience. So yeah, you, can okay. be, um, you can be a 10-year teacher and do a poorer job than someone else that's a 10-year teacher, you're still going to get paid the same. Do you think it's a good or a bad thing overall? Uh, personally, I would like to see somehow that change, but... How do you rate someone's teaching is a whole another can of worms that would probably take <laughs> another three hours to discuss. Oh, like, um, and there's many variables to put into that bucket to come out with a, a, a solution or a formula. I think it would just be more stress on teachers too if they did something like that. Oh, like, I would yeah, like some, to see... Some people some get teachers, away with doing that yeah, much. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. But some teachers, yeah, do the same thing every single year and don't change. Yeah. I know there's a teacher at a school near me that has been there for so long and they do the same thing every mm. single yeah. year and never change it. They never have to plan because they know exactly what they're doing at what time. And it's just sad. Yeah. yeah. One of the things one of my yeah. coaching mentors would always tell me early on was <clears throat> like if you've done the same thing for 12 years, you don't have 12 years of experience. You have one, one year one of year experience, experience repeated 12 times. Yeah. <laughs> and that's something that like has always scared the shit out of me. I don't want to be that guy. Like if I'm not moving forward, if I'm not growing, then like, I'm letting myself and everyone down. I've kind of got to a point with my teaching is that I know I can't impact from the top, so I'm happy making a difference where I can. Because yeah. yeah. if, I, if I wanted to impact from the top, I'd have to go away from ideally what I want to yeah. do is to yeah. teach. And I've got to be happy with that decision personally to say, all right, I think I've reached my level of where I want to be in terms of the, the structure and the hierarchy. Yeah. If you want to get that leading teacher wage, fine, but... That's added pressure in your life and it's taking you away from the classroom. Yeah. People have got to make that decision. Unfortunately, in society, money is a big thing as a factor and people want to push to hit that pay scale as quickly as they can. Yeah. But as I said, ultimately it will come down to the personal teacher's preference. But I've reached a level where I'm happy where I'm, where I'm sitting at the moment and have really no ambition to climb any further than where, where I am right now. That's, that's the cool thing to be able to be self-aware enough to understand, to know that and to understand that and to go, I'm going to make a, as big of, like, because your, I guess, growth will come from making a bigger difference to all the people around you. That's right. Which is pretty cool. Like, and I, I've been on the outskirt, the periphery of the, of the top, the next job, so I'm sitting, like, just below the next rung and I know I don't want to do that. Like, cool. that's too much stress. Like, I don't want to, I don't want to have to take that on board at this present yeah. time. Do you want to be a teacher forever, KP? <laughs> I don't know if I know if I want to now. <laughs> Why? I don't know. 
I think for me where I'm at, it's just a constant battle. Um, and I just want to, I want to, like I got into teaching because I love working with kids. I love helping people. I love making a difference. But I don't want to fight for that every single day. I don't want to fight for the respect. I don't want to fight for just people to listen. I don't want to fight for just to have a good class. There's yeah. a big burnout factor. Yeah. The statistics show it quite what within does, five years. It's, it's a yeah, massive yeah, drop away huge. or away from the system, which is scary. Mm, yeah. One of the main reasons I'm at the school that I'm at, again, like I love the school that I'm at. I love the teachers I work with. I love my students. Like I love it all. But my first couple of weeks at school, the kids – nearly every kid told me they haven't had the same PE teacher more than a year. So I think I came home to locking in the first, like, month and was like, I'm going to be here next year. Like, I want to be that different person. Because you're stubborn. Well, yeah, I am very stubborn. PE is wanted... undervalued in the system as well. Yeah, yeah. movement's undervalued yeah, in life. Definitely. I sometimes, sometimes I feel like PE is just for the teachers teacher. in primary school get their time release Yeah. at times. Mm. I'm like, I've got a good AP. I'm, I'm lucky in principle. They're both into sport. They love it. They understand it. But I also at times feel like it's just you take yeah. this class, so the teacher gets their planning time. Interesting. Yeah. That, that's really interesting. And same conversation with Aaron was talking about a, a environment and how important the environment is to job satisfaction. And I think you can be doing something you don't necessarily like in, in, in an environment that you love, and you can like make the most of it and, and actually enjoy it and, and, and look forward to going to work. But even if, but if you're in an environment that you don't like doing a job that you love, then eventually it's going to beat you down and beat yeah. you down, beat you down to a point where you just don't want to rock up to work anymore. Mm-hmm. And I think, like, obviously, you people guys... Get, I find with teachers, people get caught up in the stuff that they can't really affect. Yeah, mm-hmm. they can't control. They can't control. Mm-hmm. So they'll put yeah. all their time and energy saying, this is not working, this isn't good enough. Yeah. They've got that negative <laughs> attitude from the get-go. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously, that's come from wherever they've been in the system that long yep. they've got to realise that you've just got to sometimes yeah. accept for, for what it is and do what you can to make yeah. your job what it is and essentially why why we, why we did we become educators in the first place I mean you've still got a classroom of 30 kids exactly right <laughs> you know, like you, every yeah. day yeah. So yeah. Yeah. you've still got an opportunity you shouldn't bring that life. that your mentality shouldn't affect what you're trying to serve to them or bring to them as no. well yeah, that's, that's really interesting all the quotes about control and just being able to identify what's controllable and what's not are all floating into my head but I'm not going to repeat any of them because I'm just, like everyone's sick of me re- like pumping out quotes Kiddos. but yeah, yeah. Can, can I get a ding <laughs> students are smart though students yeah. know if teachers are complaining about something else or if teachers aren't like they can just read a teacher and they know what type of day they're having like what they're feeling yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. they know that's the same with oh, you're having a shit oh, one man. I'm going to make it worse yeah. <laughs> I'm going to make you cry yeah. Yeah. that's the same with like our industry as well yeah. like People pick up on, or it's the same just, as, br- as baristas and, yeah. and it's just human nature, right? You can pick up yeah. on other people's it's a great vibes. Thing about people, yeah. Like, so we need to let we need to walk into the to work and leave all the other stuff at the door mm. and focus on what we need to do, which for many of us is to create positive change. Well, we can't do that. Yeah. yeah. No, I was going to say that, like an interesting thought on what you were saying, Falsy. Um, in terms of some teachers are just they're so stuck down in the mud of all the stuff they can't really control and then others mm. who maybe kind of lift themselves above that can have the most impact do you think it's an optimist pessimist sort of thing and then leading into the question like do you guys think you're more optimistic or pessimistic and do you th- how do you think that impacts sort of the way you guys go about how you are question and, and it, does it even factor in is it relevant I don't I don't think it's I think it's relevant um, Maybe negative or positive. I think it's <coughs> negative or positive, yeah. Down I think, to but, perspective. Yeah, yeah. perspective is a really important thing. But like, because like I, like I have some hard days and I have some long days and I have some days where I'm like, what the fuck am I doing? Like, why am I doing this? Should I be doing this? Like, why? You know, it'd be so much easier if I was working for myself in a little shed, just coaching clients and 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 doing it like that. And like, but I've never. Even though I've had those days where I'm like, why am I doing this? I've never had a day where I've doubted my ability to succeed. And like, even now, I don't feel like I'm successful. Like, I feel like I've got so much more to give and to grow and to improve and stuff. And I when think. When you get that business award, you will. 
Yeah, I know. I know. I'm gonna, it's successful. I might get. Yes. Sorry, I'm not happy with this phrase. I'm not happy with that. 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 I'm not given such a, a leg up on yeah. what some of the world and what other uh, other human beings have to face. I think you'd have to ask, like, ask my parents, but I think I've always probably been that po- that optimistic person. But I've probably only really been self-aware around that optimism and that ability to embrace
but, w- but like in all seriousness, so that's probably how I frame a lot of things. Like, yeah. I see things through that prism of like, that's not good enough. That's not good enough. That's not good enough. Yeah. And uh, I don't know. It, it kind of has worked for me in some way. Like, it's not. <laughs> Does it hurt? You? Does it control you? Um, I don't know. I haven't really thought about it a lot, but like you can attest to this at work. Like constantly. Like when am I ever actually really? Does that mean you're striving for You're pretty happy with yourself no, that, today. You sound like a typical head chef, head brewer, <laughs> yeah. fucking br- barista. I think it is, and that's kind of that's perf- that perfection, perfection kind of side of Yeah, that. 100%. Just you're cre- you're creative person as well. Mm. You, you know, it's yeah. always like, I could do better. Nothing can't be improved, right? Change. And that's want... where that quote came from. Like, yeah. Yeah. It was roasting, and it was... I, I was always seen as very negative in my previous job when I was roasting. The other two guys I used to roast with every day. Yeah. Where I was like, why are you always like shitting on this roast? Like we work so hard on it. It was like, yeah, but this, it this, can, this, be this can be better. Like, yeah. They're like, oh, you always negative, you're never happy. Um, which is, it's not true. I'm not never happy, but you were happy this afternoon. You were happy. It's true, but even Georgie's like, but even then, then you could done better. They could all be better. Oh my god, you sound like Blake. How's the fucking head? The, the second two, <laughs> oh. that first one. Could that be better? I think so. So if you want an award for that, for that, for that, I still know it could be better. There's a part. Yeah, I love that. I love that because that's. That's what you need in that role, yeah. I reckon. And I think it's an yeah, important part of yeah. the team. And that's how you become excellent. To have someone yeah. in that. Um, but they're never excellent. And not to say that being positive but. doesn't get you to places. <laughs> like, so when Lockie was saying trialing and failing, I would struggle to do that because yeah. the failure would hurt me so much because I'm constantly trying to achieve so high. And but technically, so critical. technically you do fail every because, time because you find something yeah, exactly. that's not quite right. Which, whereas I would go, fuck yeah, yeah you've yeah. nailed that. Like... Yeah, your and I need amazing. people around me Blake's like that. Blake's beer's amazing. Honest, like, Man, you've nailed that beer. No, no, yeah. it's off. I'm like, well, mate, it fucking sells well. Well, what do you <laughs> love from <laughs> it? Like, it tastes good, so... Like, shut up. Yeah. Enjoy uh, the... Like, besides fit with Georgie. Oh. Wow. Yes. What, what? Yes. <laughs> Fist <laughs> pump. What do you love, though? What do you love? Snuggles like in the morning. Improving. I love being a little spoon. Improving things. Like, I actually really like the process of making things a little bit better yeah. every time. Which is a pos- um, positive awesome. outlook, I reckon. Well, is yeah. it, it's a positive outlook. I think you're an optimist. It's very, very critical. I think I'm yeah. just, like, I think Starting you're an optimist. Perfection is positive. Yeah. But, I like, I see it too. Yeah. Yeah. I think I'm an optimist, but I see everything through a negative prism. But it's first. all about improving. It's not about that's. For that's yeah, it's not like, well, no, it's me. Yeah. Nothing can be done. There's no cloud in my head, right? I don't see things. You're not an unhappy guy. No, I don't see things always like. Half full. It's always half empty. It could always be better. Yeah, well, he's half full. Right. You, you've made that point. Now. He's full of shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but well, after you say mean things, I'm not going to say nice things. But like, I see you as the kind of person we've got to know each other really well over the last twelve months. I see you as the kind of person. If anyone asks me what do you think of Tommy, it's like he's the, like one of the nicest, most genuine guys ever who really cares about all the things he does, and all the people around him. Like you just want to help mm. and you want to improve people and like environments and the world world around you like there's been times where I feel as though you care more about my business than my staff do like some of my staff do mm. um, and damn it like, Cooper <laughs> I don't even care Step I don't care about anything do. why am I even here uh, <laughs> Simon's not one of them um, and, and, you guys. But, but, and like one of the things that my one of my mentors said to me is like you get the staff you think you deserve and I realised that well I don't have to like if I use how much you care for common folk and how much you want to be a part of like Sammy and Benny's vision and that vision becomes your vision. Um, like, like I don't have to just accept like what I've got, like things can change. And I think yeah. like you've been able to teach me unintentionally probably because like it's just you, but you've been able to show me that Shit can all be, always be improved, and there's always room to room to grow and room to improve. So, I don't know. I I, I see you as a as an optimist that hates being called an optimist. I'll, I'll accept that. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Yeah. Now, now you're in love. You've changed a little bit, though. <laughs> Does it, do you even yeah. train anymore? Yeah. I haven't seen you in months. <laughs> yeah. There was like I saw you from a distance one time. There was a 45 day period where I didn't see you, and I was really worried. Dude, you're in South America, man. Is that like different? Like if he was single, he would have come with me. That's a lie. Well, yeah. Well, hey, like, I have you seen Re- have you seen Reese Johnson lately? Who? Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> it. I miss Reese. <laughs> Who is that guy? <laughs> so, like, two weeks we get Tommy back for for ten days or so. <laughs> <laughs> Who has let it? Him, let him be with her. She's leaving for nine months. Oh yeah, but let it him, doesn't let have him to change. Have six months. months. I don't know. Tommy just had a heart. She'll come back. <laughs> six months or something. <laughs> 
she hasn't told you she's extended it. What about you, Palsy? Yes. Are you an optimist or a pessimist? And why? I think, as I was alluding to before, I think just because we've got such a head start in life, I think it's hard not to be an optimist. Yeah. With the generation we've come from. Disagree. <laughs> well, how does it disagree? We'll get to you, mate. We'll get <laughs> to yeah, you. no, no, I like, no, go. Just from go my, my experiences and my background and yeah. what I've gone through, like, it's yeah. hard not to think that life shit or anything like that. Yeah. Like, yeah, that, and that's my kind of theory, like... But that makes I'm, you an optimist, because there's plenty of idiots that think they're like, oh, this, this is just fucked. That's, yeah, that's, really that's not optimism, though. That, that's like no, no, because that's, yeah, that's, 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 that's someone pessimism. that's a pessimist. That's a pessimist. <laughs> yeah. And what I was going to say, and I'm cutting you off. Sorry, that's fine. But it's just there's plenty of people around, and you wouldn't associate with them. I don't think anyone, myself included, would associate with someone that's a pessimist. Be like, mate, you are just bringing me down. And I think that's what we've got here on the table. It doesn't matter what career you're in, what industry you're in, what you do. You're sitting around people that create, you know, your lifestyle. Yeah. I think that's the same thing, you know, with everybody here. Like a track slide. Doesn't matter right? what uh, angle you attack your life at, yeah. everyone here is an optimist. Otherwise, they wouldn't be sitting here having this discussion. You're like, fuck, I'd rather be sitting at t- home watching TV, having Drinking a beer. shitty fucking VB or something. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, sounds pretty good. It could be a new slogan. Jog on, jog on, jog on. Drink five positive people. That's it. Do you for life? <laughs> Op- so, Jenny Road, the optimist beer. <laughs> 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 yeah, exactly. You, 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 I'm, I'm after you, mate. I reckon people that listen to your podcast or people that listen to podcasts are not negative. But that's but that's the most either. frustrating thing, right? Like it's almost like the you're preaching you're preaching to the choir. Um, is that yeah, a religious but, thing? But that they better themselves. Sure, it is. Uh, Jesus said that. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> it's a direct quote. <laughs> to the choir. Yeah, I just asked him that. He's like, yeah, that was me. I reckon I'm a bit of both. Oh, yeah, I, I agree. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah, I think when... Oh, you She's go. here because she has to be, right? Go on. Wait, are you? Why am I here? Not here, here? like... Oh, not, not, here? Not, not here as in in this room, but here as in with me, right? What, she has what? to be with you? No, no. What are you talking about? I think we can all agree oh. we're not okay with that. <laughs> KP? Where's uh, the bell? <laughs> <laughs> let, me, let me rewind a little bit. Let me right, rewind. Maybe KP rewind a bit. He's still digging up. Dude, I'm still digging up. You are not fine. Like... <laughs> Alright, let me let me Sorry, rewind. Let me re- let me rewind a bit. A little you might bit. have to edit. Every- <laughs> no, I'm not editing. Every- like everyone else that's that's here, like your people that ha- I have, like attracted and vice versa into our. our I each- suppose the game. <laughs> 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 I don't think Kate should be here. <laughs> Can you let me talk? Can you let it's me talk? Good let you the man right finish. You've talked enough. I feel like we're helping you out. Yeah, you are. You are. Um. <laughs> we could just hand over KP. We really could. No, I want to hear this. <laughs> yeah, I think we all want to hear this. Everybody wants to hear this. So what was that? Can... Call a spade a spade thing. Give me that spade. I'm digging. Uh, oh, shit. Uh, <laughs> so, every, every, everyone, here, everyone here is like, in each other's lives because like there's... <laughs> We share heaps and heaps in common, and I think the the thing that differentiates friendship from relationships is you share a shit ton in common, but there's also that. Pu- that but you're that, not that, KB's friend. I love her to bits, and yes, we are friends. But there's that that part of the relationship that you don't necessarily share in common, right? And the, and the and you start to at the longer you're together, you start to understand those differences and be aware of those differences. Grant's nodding a lot. Ah, yeah, no, I'm agreeing. Shout out, Kate. You start no, to understand uh, those differences, uh, and you start to acknowledge yeah. those differences, and you start to appreciate those differences, right? Yeah. And I think, like, that our like KP and our my ability to like nine years, and you've been fairly similar. You two have been together ten. for a long time, ten. Like Tommy's been together with Georgie for like eight days, or, eight days or something. You celebrated your week anniversary. Congratulations! Yeah. 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 Cheers to you. Just more, I, would, I would be just for that. <laughs> <laughs> if I get in trouble for one more time, if you're doing something cute, I'm going to fucking listen to it. She's going to listen to this too much. I love it. She'll listen to it too much. I'm glad I'm with Tommy. So He's probably Georgie. texting her right now. He's um, like, like liking <laughs> you with But like <laughs> o- over, over that long period of time, you start to appreciate the things that you don't have in common more, more so. Um, and then you learn from each other and you're, you, you have that like I'm a big believer that relationships are two lives like that are being lived side by side and not one life that's you're trying to fucking make everything work and make each other love everything and 
Love, love, love the same things. Is that, is that a quote? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's a quote. I'll, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll work on it and we'll, draw it and we'll make it into a t-shirt, but I don't know. I okay. might have missed the point, but mm. why is she not like she doesn't have to be here? Well, it's not that she doesn't have a B here, but I'm just saying that, for different that, reasons that we're not... What yeah, we did. yeah, no, correct. No, I love the yeah, answer. I just don't feel like I'm, a full circle. I don't know what KP... She knows how I climbed out of that hole. <laughs> and like, what do you... Yeah, but what do you think? What do you think, KP? You can either pull him out of the hole or you can push him back in. <laughs> this <laughs> is Sparta. How do you feel like being in control? It must feel good. That whole thing just completely confused me, Luke. Because we were friends... Yeah, we were friends for how long? Before we even started dating. Yeah, but you were, fr- so we... we were friends because you were like deeply attracted to me. <laughs> wow, yeah, we that's shit. Are we going to go for another hour? Go. That's I want to hear why you're a boy with bright <laughs> oh, yeah, that's pink what we on. Um, no, I think I'm a bit of both. I think when it comes to myself, I'm a pessimist. Sorry, mate, we'll come back to that. <laughs> it, it's fine. Oh. We'll talk about it later. But I think when other people are talking about like their issues or something, like if someone's like venting to you. Happy, but you're happy. Shut up. Welcome. If someone's venting to me, I would see the positive in every single thing that they're saying and try and turn it positive. But then when it comes to myself, I would be like just yeah. focusing on the negative and I would struggle to focus on the positive for myself. Is so that, I think I'm a bit of both. Is that negative or just being critical on yourself? Mm. It's probably two separate different, uh, two separate different, mm. two different things. I, Do you I get think. stuck and not work your way through that situation? Like, yeah, okay, I do it all the time. Like, sometimes I don't sleep or I wake up at three because I'm stressing or I'm, I'm really, well, I'm focusing on the negative. But that's because I know I need to focus on that critical issue and go, right, how the fuck do I get out of this? So you're identifying the fact that you, I, you know, you that know this. Georgie. Georgie! Texting me. <laughs> Georgie! <laughs> you sure? Seriously. Get, get your phone out. No, but do you know what I mean? Like, you're identifying there's an AT. issue and there's a, there's a problem, but you I don't think I up... identify it, though, as an issue. Okay. You yeah. just kind of sit there in the... In the funk of it, yeah. yeah. Mm. Until someone pulls me out of it. Mm. Yeah, everyone needs that sometimes. But, yeah. 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 Pull your head in, idiot. But, but yeah, like, that's something you're me. significantly better at now um, because of, well. of, the, of the groups and the people that you like surround yourself with, right? Like you're significantly better at, at pulling yourself out of the, those negative spirals that everyone goes through um, now because you're of the environments you surround yourself in. Like, you'll come home from days at work where you've had a really really tough day and you'll go see Shelby or you'll catch up with a friend or you'll come to Vertis Group training at 6pm on Monday to Fridays. And, <laughs> and you'll jump, and, but you'll jump into an environment where people are positive and people are happy and, yeah. and it, it'll pull you out of that negative spiral yeah, that you find yourself yeah. going into. Just tell me I'm right, please. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> what about you, Grant? Are you a, po- a pessimist or an optimist? Optimist and likes to bitch a lot. Oh, that's that is <laughs> so true. That is great. Yeah. <laughs> Are you, you doing it in a funny way? Yeah, I love no, it. I like. Yeah, no, that's good. Cool. Like oh, that's a good thing. Is it? Yeah. Mm. I don't. Know, yeah. I just. <laughs> I just. I just find you like. Oh, here we go. This is going to everyone sit down. <laughs> everyone. Crack over to Jenny Rose. Everyone at home, uh, pull the car over and just have a listen. At home, pull the car over. That doesn't make sense. Anyway, <laughs> just talk. I don't. Know, I just. I just find you always. Like you're always working on something, yeah. and, I, and I think when you allow yourself time to work on yourself, and that being like like which is fucking minimal, like and it's something that I've struggled with a lot in the past, and I feel as though I'm getting better. I feel as though I'm giving myself time for me um, because that gives me more time for everyone else. But I think that's some, something you're kind of moving through at the moment is that ability to go. Wait, you know what? Hold up. How does Spending more time on you give you more time for everyone else. That's a bullshit quote that makes okay. no sense. Okay, no time. Okay. Thank you for calling him out. I'm yes. calling him out. I appreciate it. That's one of the lucky so, lawsisms so, that no, is just here's, here's, all right, here's how it goes, sorry. Right? You can finish your background. No, I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to bullshit my way through an answer okay. for that. For Another that. answer? We're going to join the circle this time. Oh, okay. Are we so, doing a list of all things that Lockie has to do back in? So if, if you if you take more time for yourself, right? Like So so say say every every 60 days or every 90 days you... Well, it's not... Just how about you shut up for a second? <laughs> physical time versus actual No, no, time. physical time. Okay, so if you... So if, <laughs> if, every, if every 60 or 90 days, right, you take, Wait, say... 60 or 90. Take 60. All right, every 60 days, you take, say, four days to yourself, right? Yeah. Yep. Over the next 60 days, because you've had that four days to yourself, you're going to be significantly more present 
in that in those moments that you have with everybody else, which means you're going to be putting a lot more energy and a lot more time to those people rather than being somewhere in the middle of, I need to look after myself. <laughs> it's not a video podcast, KP. It doesn't matter if I'm moving my hands. I know, but I wonder if you can talk without them. I'm very attacked. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is weird. Uh, what was it saying? <laughs> how, how do I talk now? <laughs> no, so, so if you're able to, you know, a, actually able to okay. be present and actually spend time with, with the people you're with, you don't have to worry about needing time for yourself. Like I find when I coach, 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 coach and work heaps, my sessions lose quality and then I'm not as present with my clients and I'm not as... Yeah, that's not what you said. You didn't say about quality, you said time. But, but, you but, it's, a, but it's the same yourself, thing. No, but it's, it's the not. same thing. Quality time is very different. He's straight, pure time. Time, time is, is a measure of time. Time is a measure of time. Time is a measure of time. Time is an illusion. Have you not read Sapiens? Time is an illusion. Time is something that we've made up, but we've all just agreed on. So time doesn't matter. we disagree right now about what time is. You say time is quality. I say time is actual time. Can you guys just let me crawl out of the hole? No, no, I'm agreeing with you. I agree with you. And I do that all the time. But like... Wait, what time if you if you if you have if you have time where you're <laughs> I'm not done. Yes. If you have time when you're half like half thinking about all the shit you've got to you've got to do, and half the time like so you're the time you're spending, fifty percent of you is with the shit you've got to do. Fifty percent of you is with the people you're meant to be with. Then that time isn't going to anyone, right? Yeah, agreed. Yeah. Oh, no, it's going to someone to you and fifty percent to the people you're supposed to be. They cancel each other out. You just said it. Yeah. <laughs> um, what are we talking about? We're going so well. Great. Oh. You're an optimist to yeah, slice the bitch. Next. <laughs> Did you talk through yours? I, I feel as though Grant interrupted. Uh, I, I think I'm an optimist, but I'm I'm very right. critical of myself as well, which mm. can so come okay, across man. as being a peasant. Uh, why, why do you think you're critical of yourself? Um, I don't know where it's come from. I hold, yeah. hold myself to high standards. Mm. Yeah. Um, I, can, I can attest to that as well. Um, and I struggle to, I guess, looking at it through Tommy's lens, there's always something that you can do better, regardless of what you are actually doing. Yeah. So, yeah, it's it's a difficult one to kind of, kind of see. But it, I don't um, like being centre of attention too. So that kind of, that whole. Mm. Um, it's interesting as a teacher. You know? Yeah, which is <laughs> it, yeah. Yeah, I'm happy to do it, but if it's. Uh, like speaking at a wedding or something, like I'll get really nervous and those kinds of things, and anxious and yeah. these kind of things so as ne- well. Like okay, so the next couple of minutes is going to be about you. So just <laughs> Great. appreciate that for Thank a second. Um, but like, ask her any questions. So, you, <laughs> <laughs> so you're like you. <laughs> Grant and Sam have gone to uh, to, to urinate. So if anyone Together. if anyone would like to rip into them, sword fight, sword fight, <laughs> <laughs> treat yourself. But Palsy, like you're the kind of person that like it really. I find it really hard when you're. And like we have some cool, like some cool, um, honest conversations sometimes. And I find it really hard when you're so down on yourself and so negative because you're such a king. <laughs> and like I don't, like I don't say that just to blow smoke up your ass, pump your tires up, or, or anything like that. Like no. I genuinely love the person you are, and I love that you're a part of my life, and I love that you're. Like you're someone that. So this is making me really, really uncomfortable. Yeah, but I'm the of deal with it. You yeah. can't sit now either. You're but you're, all over but the you're place. the kind of person who. You're the kind of person who I like. Like I want to be like in a lot of respects. Like I want more people in my life to be like Pulse. Like if everyone could just like be more be more Pulse, then the world would be a better place. So, well, why do you feel the need to beat yourself up about things that whether you can control them or you can't, or um, or have those such high standards that you don't necessarily pump your own tires up? Like, why do you feel the need to be that way? Or is that just you? Like, oh, like is that I wish I could that answer it because if yeah. I could answer it, I would probably wouldn't be in that situation, I, I feel. Yeah. Like I, I don't know. It's something that might be ingrained into my personality and my DNA. I'm, I'm not too sure. Um, as I said, I got extremely uncomfortable when you were saying those things, but I do appreciate the sentiment. But I hate being that, that centre of attention and... Uh, people talking to me now, I get, I get really uncomfortable because I don't, I don't know, I don't know what it is, but it, it, it's, it's something that I, I struggle with a great deal. Yeah, and it's, a, it's a really important thing, like, like we were talking about before in terms of self awareness, to, to know that, like, that's you, and, and be okay with that being you, like. 
<laughs> and we're on to the next one. Hey, Lucky. Miss, Mr. Simon Cooper. Oh, sorry, we're still going with this. We're still on a podcast. Oh, yeah, oh, yes, 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 KP. I was going to ask another oh, question. Right. I thought, oh, I thought, no. I thought, sorry, I thought we're done with that. Do you want, do you want to go Coop first? Yeah, or do you let's, want to ask yeah, let's go yeah. Coop. Yeah, Coop, optimist or pessimist? Quick one. Oh, I think I'm an optimist. I would agree. Good times. Thanks. Um, I, I, I agree with Paul, so I have, very, I have high standards. And same with Tommy as well. Like, I feel like that I'm hard on myself if what I, if the work I produce or if my effort is not to the standard that I want it to be. Can I call bullshit on the high standards argument? So you think I have low standards? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I like... I love I, this whole... It's so fucking <laughs> huge. Like, just... If Reese Johnson's listening... Apologies that the factory is now in destroyed. <laughs> the factory is now he, he's got concave. concave. <laughs> um, no, no, I, like on the on the I have high standards, so I'm gonna like treat myself like shit argument. Oh, I don't treat myself like no, shit. No, no, but there's times where you and like Palsy and KP and Tommy <laughs> might like have that negative self talk or that inability to accept that you're not always gonna have those like reach those high standards, and I think. Like I feel as though I am I'm the same as as you guys in certain aspects. I have really really high standards, and I expect like yeah, you expect expect things of myself, and I expect things of the people around me and my team and yeah. clients and things like that. But if I don't meet them, I kind of can go. You know what? That's okay. Um, I, I like here's why I didn't meet them. Here's why I didn't reach those expectations. So rather than like beat myself up for lack of a better term tomorrow I'm just going to make sure that I show up and smile and yeah. try and do better um, and I think that like we like we can have that negativity around not making not, not meeting our standards or we can have our have that optimism and positivity around for me it seems to be very cyclical yeah like I can feel myself getting into like a kind of negative kind of which is I feel it's a natural rhythm other people would disagree that um, that it's not natural and yeah. you shouldn't, I shouldn't feel that way and yeah. I kind of struggle with that kind of concept myself Like, but I know now the warning signs to be able to um, pull myself out of it a lot quicker than I used to so yeah. it's something that it's always a work in progress but KP had a question yeah she did I'm Go moving on, on. Oh. Yeah. I was going to ask Wallace but now I've changed my mind oh. <laughs> oh. double bell because he's too deep in the hole we can't hear him anymore yeah. <laughs> hey Lucky you're all done <laughs> Hello. Um, Tommy, what's been your favourite episode of the podcast? Oh. Out of 52, what's your favourite? Georges. Wow. I love you, you're a shit. <laughs> <Tommy's laughs> oh, which one? There's two. Oh, look, it's, it's, it's tied between two. Probably probably the second Georgie one because it's just Georgie. I haven't Georgie. listened to either. Really? No. Well, oh. um, we talked about this, actually. Why haven't you listened to your girlfriend's podcast? You're a terrible, What's terrible your girlfriend support. Because it was pre-girlfriend. Yeah. We were yeah. starting to get to know each other. And he didn't like, want to do that. It felt weird. Yeah, you like, didn't want to feel like he knew you. everything. I don't want this like... Pre-conceived. What are they called? Those like cheat book guides? The, um, cheat cheat. cheat, cheat or no, what's the book? The Idiot's, guides, Idiot's yeah. Guide. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Idiot's Georgie. Guide to Fit with Georgie. <laughs> 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 I'm trying to think of... No, they were like the, the synopsis of the book that you read instead of reading the book in the extra. The blurb. Sounds great. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever they call No, but we, we, we actually talked about this. I really respect it. The checkpoint. Yeah, the checkpoint. I don't know. So good. Uh, I, I mean, know. like, part of the, like, the joy of a new relationship is that yeah. journey at the start. Mm. And kind of, like, I totally understood when we talked about this, why mm. you were like, no, I don't want to listen to him. I'd rather go on a date with him and rather go do something with him. Yeah, that's good. Would you listen to him now? Um, well, she's away because well, she's her. away because you miss her so much. <laughs> Maybe you coward. Um, uh, <laughs> I don't know like... if you heard me or if you just repeated what I said. He's not concentrating. <laughs> no, let's see. <laughs> Favorite one. Um, trying to divide his time. I'm trying to think, man. Yeah, this is really good radio silence. <laughs> um, yeah, I did it. Sorry, everyone at home can think. So one of my favorite ones was with Coach Cam. Uh, so that was one start. of the first ones. Yeah. One, maybe number eight. Nah, uh, early, that was episode. It? I think I don't think it was. Was it top ten? I'm pretty sure early ten. I thought it was, it was a little after. Anyway, not important. Go on. Um, yeah, I just took I took his from it. He's a very insightful person. He goes deep. Uh, not and yeah, yeah. he's a good dude. Mm. Next. <laughs> you going yet? Yeah. Super. I think. Kind of been. 
Either of you two. Definitely not. Grant, tell like just fill us in like on when you did the podcast in terms of like major events in your life. Yeah. <laughs> I think we I think we went through it. We did, we did, but pretty sure I started every sentence with um, but that's because I don't think you were brain absolutely was cactus. Worse. Yeah, I was pretty cactus. <laughs> we'll do a new one soon. Cooked. I think did we not schedule it in to be the Cam day? was number ten, if anyone was wondering, but carry on. Yeah, the, didn't we we schedule it in <laughs> we were bugging the shit out of me and I'm like this bike. I was bugging the shit out of you. Yeah you were two messages. Hey do you want to do this week? Yeah sure, what about Thursday? Yeah but I didn't like your positive vibes. <laughs> like, hey, like, Too I've optimistic got shit to organise. Why are they not and I'm just very far behind in what I was doing but we opened the same day as when good. I did the podcast and I don't think I'd ever be more tired. Good That's when I got the I think two weeks after that, I realised that I wasn't running at full capacity and I had um, adrenal fatigue and I wasn't eating right. And what were we talking about you not looking after yourself before? Pretty much. Yeah. yeah, well, I'm getting there slowly, I think. We're working on we're, it. We're, 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 we've made leaps and bounds yes, we to have. where I was. And yes, I think, we have. Yeah, that was, that was where I realised it. Was like, I was just so knackered. And I still haven't listened. I won't listen to my podcast and I don't. I refuse to. But... Um, yeah, that was horrible. Well, but that, the that, title you, sums you put it up, in the right? time to make something happen. If yeah. you don't do it, it won't happen. So you just have to do it sometimes. And then uh, G Road Q, yeah. Oh. <laughs> Next. Good. So it's all worthwhile, right? Because you guys yep. are making your own beer and everything now. Yeah. Brewery goes in soon. We'll be good. <laughs> Bigger brewery. Anyway. Good, Tommy. Thoughts? We get there yet? Still need it. I really liked um, Maddie and Coop. I think both of those. Like legitimately, we're both. Buddy Tilly. Tilly. Tell her yeah, that. I think. Well, I'll say it now because I tell her all the time. But Maddie's actually Hold excellent on. and Just, doesn't can you give repeat herself that? enough Hold credit. On. I don't know. We're not there yet. I'm not going to do that. No. One more time. No. Um, <laughs> I mean, no, she's excellent at what she does, and she doesn't really give herself enough credit. And uh, anytime I can, I try and build up Maddie because she's really good at what she does. Um, he's a really good coach, and I would. Happily get coached by and recommended to everyone. So good human. Yeah, and it was really good to see. Like she's good at a lot of stuff outside of coaching, and yeah, yeah, has done some interesting things, and it's good to see that side of her as well. And then same with Coop. Like didn't know a lot of the stuff that he'd done before he was at Virtus. Like yeah, it was really good to see kind of how they got to Virtus and what happened before and what kind of shaped them into who they are now and how they coach and how they act the way they act. That's cool. Yeah. I like that. Right. Good answer. Yeah. Love it. Great answer. Do what I can. I love the, um, I'll, I've listened to a few. Um, I did a quick impromptu trip to New Zealand, had a high car and listened to about five Virtus podcasts on my <laughs> way from <laughs> Lake, Lake Taupo to Auckland. I'll take that. Um, but it was good. It was a good way what to was, pass the car. was the more coops. beautiful, the, the audio or the visual? It's actually... It's weird. So now, whenever I see Simon Cooper, I see the rolling hills of the <laughs> That's up. amazing. I'm not even lying. That's, That's 100%. Because so I didn't really know you prior <laughs> to this thing that well. I, like, obviously, seen your face. I'll take that. And it was, it, you know, it's definitely, I think, uh, you know, you're a rolling hills kind of guy. Yeah. <laughs> That's so uh, true. That's how I would describe myself. But <laughs> the podcast that I really enjoyed, <laughs> Rolling Hills. If I was a landscape, I'd be a rolling hill. <laughs> um, I loved um, Jeremy Dooley, I think it was. Oh, mate. Um, he just... Um, well, not only did he have a fascinating sort of story to tell, but yeah. um, like no doubt a really insightful and probably quite an intelligent kind of human being, yeah. but really approached it from a relatively unorthodox sort of way, like from you know his beginnings um, as <coughs> sort of a bit of a ruffian kind of outcast, broady, yeah, broady, broady kid, through to sort of what he's managed to achieve. Um, I felt I felt that it was really inspirational, and it gave me a bit of an insight, maybe into the the elite culture that you sort of experienced that, um, when you were with Collingwood, Lockie, um, and kind of it made a lot of sense as to who you are now. Um, I felt, you know, being inspired by guys like him. Oh, yeah. speaking of elite, Smith, hey. reigning Virtus Ball champion. Hey, Mitch Rowe. Rowe. So, Mitch Rose just rolled in. Late what, what a man! Uh, grab, grab a chair, mate. Pull, pull, uh, pull it up. We're just talking about our favourite podcast. Grab episodes. a nice cold Jenny Rhodes. <laughs> Pale ale. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, IPA, IPA, actually. Yeah, no, du- Duels is Duels is someone who I I frustratingly didn't get to know as well as I would have liked for a big chunk of the time he was at Collingwood. Like he wasn't at Pies for a long time. Um, but. Like being able to connect with him and, and realize the kind of person he was. Like he's taught me so much about about growth and team and and the importance of um, and the importance of loving what you do and actually have like 
having a purpose and meaning and, and things like that. And um, like he's back in Melbourne now, so I, I probably should get him on for a for a second one because he's the kind of person that comes up fairly regularly in the in the uh, favorite podcast or like moments uh, of the last fifty one and a half episodes. And yeah, that that story of him talking through um, his uh, experiences at the um, all the stuff that happened in Melbourne that day is just. I, I didn't know yeah. no beforehand and like Dude, that was intense oh like it was just crazy being across the room from him and having I feel like you should tell, little tell little that story mm. um, give us a bit of context yeah. That one. yeah so uh, I can't remember what episode it was but with Jeremy Dooley he was one of the first responders on the scene to uh, that guy in the Commodore who ran Burke down Street a bunch of people um, down Burke Street so he talked through that and that was kind of the he'd worked a lot for the Reach Foundation early on and that was kind of the the straw that broke the camel's back to get him to like change things up and, and move up to Sydney and, and jump back in with the Reach Foundation so he's back in Melbourne now which is which is super exciting um, so um, yeah hopefully I'll get him on, on soon for another episode Rowie yes. what's been your favourite episode apart from episode 31 with uh, with uh, Performance Cage Mitro <laughs> pretty sure it was 29 wasn't it <laughs> I can't remember, mate. It's, <laughs> 50, 51's a lot of episodes. Like, uh, yeah, just been, just been chucking them in week after week, uh, contributing to uh, making people better all over the world. Well, well, without shaking hands and kissing babies, I like Grant's the best. Yes. <laughs> we were just, Grant Rogers, the cluster he was, he was the cluster, <laughs> the cluster fuck. Gr- Grant was just talking about how rubbish it was. So can you fill us in? Because I thought it was really good, even though like he was... Uh, a little uh, un- under the weather. Depleted is a yeah. great word. It's a great, yeah, it's a great word. Well, it, at that time, I didn't know Grant at all, so I'd only known like what I've seen on face value, let alone like how he started Jetty Road and all the other stuff that he's done to get where he is. At that time, that was obviously why that was kind of one of my favourite ones. That's cool. I didn't know. Yeah, well, and that's like something that, <laughs> like, obviously most of the guys in the room now are people that I've known for a long time, but like Tommy was early on. We were getting to know each other when the podcast was starting and, and Sammy kind of same deal um, and Grant like I didn't know you before the podcast like no. I was like these guys are doing awesome stuff I love beer I need to like figure out a way to catch up with these guys and the podcast is kind of just like a, a really easy medium to get to know you guys good first date mate it was a great first date mm. yeah it's we funny had, because before we had you gin. rocked up I said I need to go get a slab of Dirty Road and then you rocked up with one and I was like and you well, gave it to me and and that's 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 again oh, so wow. about backtracking I'm off you now because you gave it to him and not me so <laughs> I had to get bummed out <laughs> you'll, you'll get there Rowie you'll get there um, kind of social club, you know, <laughs> yeah, someone's got to keep the lights on. <laughs> <laughs> I have one off six o'clock. How many hours did you work last week? I have no. <laughs> Less than me. He coached, 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 coached a lot more, that's for sure. Um, but, like, just like, I don't know, I just think it's a really, really cool that a medium like this and something that, like, was just me kind of doing something I said I would do anyway, I've been able to create an environment where I can meet people like you and become you're welcome I kept telling you to <laughs> yes. do a podcast with him you did keep telling me to do a podcast with him mm-hmm. um, I think I picked you up from uh, Crittenden Winery w- once upon a time what hey. e- early on like years ago Lockie thinks that he drove this you home good. from yeah. Lauren's wedding I think I did I don't remember it yeah you were cactus <laughs> I was wearing red wine so I couldn't tell you yeah <laughs> I, um, I drove you home from Lauren's wedding I just talking so. to you the whole time about a brewery hey, you know, so again? Nah, it's Blake was it Blake? I went up to... Oh, I got in all sorts of trouble. Okay. So, All right. wasn't you. No, but anyway, no, so it was Blake. Hill. I was in Red Hill. There you go. There you go. Um, you sure you, yeah, I didn't drive you back to Red Hill? It wasn't far. No, I couldn't tell you. All right. I th- po- I'm, uh, I'll check the I genuinely, I'm now, I'll I genuinely, genuinely think it was you. Okay. Uh, um, but, like, to now go from... like I didn't know you when I started this thing, and, like, it's just a simple medium, but now you're someone that I talk to every day, um, even if you're bitching about how tight your hips are or... How tired you are because you haven't got any sleep, or how tight his sleeves are now. How tight his sleeves, sleeves are now. That he's actually done some bicep curls. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, sorry for making you a better human. Yeah, you're welcome. Someone's um, got to fill out a menu. Has anyone not answered their favorite podcast question? Yeah, I didn't. What was yours? Benny. Benny Hogan. Oh, yeah. oh mate. The reason why I liked it Good so one. much is because, well, it, it was about business, which 
what I related to it the most is, and what I deal with with my directors. It shows you that so many people can come from different work, walks of life to find their passion. Yeah. And it doesn't matter how old you are, what's going on with your lifestyle, how much shit you deal with. Um, you, you know, if you've got that passion inside you and you want to make that move, it's fucking possible. Yeah. That's what I love about it and, and the fact that he's done some really cool shit at the same time. Yeah. Really eye-opening stuff. Yeah. Like, I, I, Hoggs is the kind of person that, like, I was, obviously didn't know very well until he started um, actually working in folk fully. Uh, but he's someone who's, like, I'm, I don't think I've ever met someone who has enough, as much time for everyone yeah. he meets as hoax. Like, he's just the nicest, most genuine, like, I said you were the nicest, most genuine human. Hoax is the top two most he, nicest he, and most genuine he humans. He genuinely loves you too. It's weird. It's the yeah. best. I there love him. No one meets hoax. Yeah. Um, and, and, and leaves worse off. Oh, and yeah. that's that is a fact. Except if you get your name wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Georgia. Yeah, Georgia. <laughs> uh, fit, fit with Georgia on Instagram. Get around it. Uh, Tommy Turlak, uh Loves her, apparently. Get around him. <laughs> <laughs> I know, no, but I. Ben Good guy. Yeah. Oh, it's, just, it's, just, it's, just so, it's just so. Have you told her yet? <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> Wait, are you trying to get Tommy to, to tell oh. Georgie that he loves oh, this her is, for oh, the first imagine, time on a podcast imagine, that she'll only listen to when she's in another oh. country? Will that be the most amazing thing ever? She's in the play and going, oh, I really so. miss Tommy. I'm not sure. I love you, Georgie. Maybe <laughs> you. But Benny Benny yeah, Hogan, like he has so much time for for like <laughs> everyone around him, and like so much time for Virtus and, and things like that. And I, I appreciate him immensely. One thing I do question though is his choice of magazines. Like he's got th- <laughs> three episodes of uh, Aircraft Commerce on his desk, the Journal for Commercial Aircraft Business issue one one six February Look, it's a great read. Oh, look, look I'm, I'm going to open up to a random page. What copy was that? I have that one at home. Oh, really? <laughs> no. um, so, so, so this is page 34. Uh, the structure of rotable support programs. An increasing number of airlines are swapping the traditional system of owning, managing, and maintaining their inventories the of rotable components <laughs> for all-inclusive power by the hour. Packages paid at fixed Aussie, rates. What was your How does someone read this? Like, for someone that's, like, not someone the most... Wrote, not a lot smarter than us. Oh, he's just... Yeah, he touché. must be so, touché, touché. so intelligent. So... Um, Cheers to him for keeping everyone safe at Tiger for so long, and, and Jetstar, and, and Jetstar, and Qantas, and, <laughs> and for for making Philippine, Philippine Airlines what it is today. So shout out to <laughs> <laughs> shout out to Ben Hogan. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think I haven't answered which one's my favourite. This one. KP. It's not really Are you allowed to say? Yeah. Have you answered? No. You go. What's yours? Been your favourite? Because you listen to everyone. Um. The supportive partner you are. I have not listened to everyone. Wow. Well, no. You didn't listen to Sammy Kex. That's for sure. Started. <laughs> you, you're like you listen to the intro. <laughs> um, my favorite one. Mine's completely different to everyone else's. My favorite one's Kira Wills. Ooh. Um, nice. the one with the knee, just because of three knees. Yeah. She, 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 has, she, she, she only has. She only has. She only has three knees. She only has two knees. I should listen. She's to this done one. three ACLs. <laughs> She's done. Yeah, oh, playing geez. netball, and. Yeah, it was just really interesting like, as a because I play netball myself and just hearing like her story and her journey and how determined she was to go back to it and hmm. I just found it really interesting right. and I, I was I, I could imagine it picture it as she was explaining how she did her knee and like I was driving and I remember I was cringing I was like oh poor thing yeah yeah no yeah. she explained it really well and she yeah um, I really I found that one, I um, shared that one a lot to my whole netball club and, and she's still playing which is pretty cool I saw her a couple of weeks ago. Mm. Yeah, um, yes. I'm gonna give you guys my favorite. Um, I think. Sorry. Have you given yours? No. Oh, have you? No, it's right. Oh, can we finish with you? Pulsey go. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. I walked in the room and got to do mine. So. Yeah. <laughs> oh, are you confused? Tommy's still thinking. <laughs> <laughs> which fit with Georgie one? V one or V two? Pulsey. I haven't listened to all 52, um, Proviso. Um, the most I've taken out of to date is probably the one with Mark Simpson. Uh, hey. Yeah. I really enjoyed yeah. that. He spoke with such uh, uh, clarity to me that I just was able to make some connections with what he'd been through and what I've kind of similarly faced. Fellow elite well. endurance, endurance athlete. Uh, he was a much more elite than I was. You're uh, elite, I mate. think, thanks. Um, but, um, yeah, I... Just some of the stuff he said really resonated with me and I've taken 
taking a lot of that on board. And I love the quote, win the morning, win the day. I think yeah. that's, that's it. Cool. That was the... Unless that's not you, you don't have to be a morning person, right? Or win the... Uh... The win the afternoon. The start of the morning. You know, the one I am. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that yeah, that counts. That counts. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, that's great. It's, <laughs> it's something of like the favorite episode things a weird one for me because like I've I've gained value from everything, um, which is like a really cliche answer, but it's true. So shut up. <laughs> um, <laughs> <Not silly. laughs> But but the episode that I think I left, like the episode I left, I walked out of and like I, I seriously wanted to, like I felt like I could run through a brick wall was probably Pat Pettuccini's. Like um, it was 36-ish around that mark. Um, I sat down with Pat and she's someone who I coach and someone I admire um, as a client and as a Virtus family member and she's kind of been one of those um, people and mums who's done everything and done some amazing like had amazing adventures and um, gave me a kick up the bum to finally get to Patagonia and little things like that and she was diagnosed with Parkinson's disease and, and to see and to hear how it affected her and how she was able to kind of just like pull herself up and and make sure she kept showing up every day and doing the things she needed to do and, and finding the that inner strength to um, keep being that awesome mum to support her family and um, support her like a new um, new granddaughter and like I've cried on like maybe five or six podcasts but that was one like I properly cried like I remember <laughs> like tears were like dripping down my face onto the table which were, like I don't know like I'd really appreciated her honesty and her openness in that moment um and to hear about like <clears throat> like to give you a picture of like the kind of person she is she she had a, a little a- accident uh while she was sailing a couple of weeks ago uh she crunched herself into into the dock as they were coming into uh dock and she she bruised a bunch of a couple of her ribs and um, bruised some intercostal muscles and didn't break anything but <clears throat> I spoke to her a couple of days after and she's like oh I'll have a couple of weeks off and take it easy and I was kind of like oh yeah sure you will and then a couple of days later I hear that she's in Noosa sailing again um, just because she, she already had a trip planned and well it would be inconvenient to not do that <laughs> and it's just a crazy human someone that had, like, so, like when I um, <clears throat> like if I get to um, being like having experienced as much life as she has to be able to still love every minute like she does like that's that's ultimate for me and then I followed that podcast with Rick Mirabella which a few of you guys would know um, of runner's fame and he's kind of the most one of the most optimistic and up and about people in the world so <clears throat> I uh I safe, so. safe yeah safe to say 6pm BGT that night was fairly intense uh, I was I was riding on a high for a little bit so where, yeah. do you, where do you see the podcast in the future? Oh, where great question. I was going to ask all you guys that. Good segue. Great segue. Um, I don't know. Where do you guys... Like, I'll answer in a minute, but where do you guys think I should take it? Because, like, it, it started out as, well, I probably should do it because I've been telling myself I should do it. It's like, quick quick episode. Let's do 52 weeks because, you know what, a year sounds like a good amount of time and 52 is probably everyone's favourite number being my Collingwood number, but... <laughs> well, well, Collingwood. <laughs> yeah. Apparently. <laughs> 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 you been saying... The whole time that once you get 52, you're going to email Joe Rogan, yeah. ask him to do a podcast, uh, and say he's the reason why you started. Yes. So I think you should do that. I am going to do that. So, yeah. yeah. So that was, my, like, Joe Rogan's the reason I started this thing, um, or one of the reasons. And I am going to, I'm going to send him an email and say, hey, mate, this is what I did. If he doesn't hit, if this is what I did, uh, I'd love to come over and have, like, five minutes of your time. Uh, obviously, living in Australia, we're a fairly fair way away. So, uh, hopefully, hopefully, <laughs> ho- hopefully gives you ten minutes. But I don't. Know, I, think, I just think that's that's a his kind of person that would think that it, that was would be maybe a cool commitment to make um, to jump on a plane and fly over overseas. I might have to borrow some money off you guys, but we'll work on that. <coughs> Mitchell Kipper sponsor. Hmm? Mitchell I'm Kipper going to America sponsor. the same thing. <laughs> we'll go together. He's going to hang out with Joe anyway. Yeah. Um, so that. So obviously that that's a like a. A selfish like 
me reason of why of a little, I guess you could call it a reward for yeah, hitting the happened. hitting the goal. But um, where do you guys think I should take it in terms of episode fifty three and onwards? I've actually, already recorded episode fifty three. So <laughs> sorry. There's a lot more normal people who have stories to tell, <laughs> like who you are, who you are either yet to meet or haven't talked to. So. Oh, 100%. I don't think yeah, you have to change the concept. No. Nah. <laughs> Keith. I think if you're still fulfilling the reason why you set out to do it in the first place, then why stop? Yeah. yeah. Oh, cool. That was, that was a simple answer. Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah. <it was> <laughs> um, and I talked about I talked about fast. it in the intro to today's today's podcast, which I recorded this like the Savo because um, I figured I wouldn't be able to get a word out with you guys talking about spades and digging holes and stuff. Um, dig up. <laughs> dig up. It's your fault, mate. Can you dig up? That's the fucking point. Oh. The symptoms reference. He's doomed to begin with. <laughs> Done. <laughs> um, but like my new goal is 100 podcasts. Um, some of them I'll like grab a couple of you guys and maybe some different people and, and talk about a certain topic or talk about a bunch of different topics, dive into things that are going on and, um, you know, like one with you two about recruiting staff could be cool. Like I reckon we could spend a couple of hours talking about that. So, um, yeah, I guess the only... The only really re- real requirement for me is that I keep enjoying it. Um, and if I keep enjoying it, then I'll keep doing it. And if I keep um, doing it then and know that I love doing it, then the value will come for everyone that listens. I guess the only thing I ask for everyone that does listen is uh, pump it up. Like, get around it. Like, get around it like Grant's got around Jetty Road tonight. I think it's, a, I think it's important to be... I think, it's, I think it's important to be your own biggest fan, so... So yeah, I don't. Know. I'm I'm pr- I'm really proud of what I've done. And I'm really proud of every single uh, guest I've had on. Some have been a lot easier to get on than others, and it's been cool to see people get out of their comfort zone and just like be honest. And I think it's conversation and things like this, mediums like this, don't exist enough. And I think if we can actually stop and sit down and put our phones down and <laughs> You need him to listen. <laughs> Put our phones down. Shut like like shut our laptops and just actually have conversations. And and I don't mean forced conversations. Like They're meaningful. Yeah, meaningful conversations. Like I think I think sometimes like we're better off just being on our phones and letting ourselves chill out and disconnect from daily life, and just be brain dead for an hour or so um, on our laptop or on our phone or in front of Netflix or whatever. Like I think that's really important as well. So I think being able to identify the time to stop and have a, have a, like an actual conversation um, with someone and not try and force it and just have the like have a conversation or a or a talk because you genuinely want to know more or want to learn more or want to challenge your own views because like there's certainly like Tommy and Sammy have been two <coughs> big advocates of um, or two advocates two people who have challenged my beliefs on like religion and things like that and even like I still think it's batshit crazy but there's certain aspects of it that I appreciate a lot more now because of, of having those conversations so um, <coughs> like what again, again, that's a, again, <laughs> again that's another conversation that's again I, I did say batshit crazy but like I, I like the fact you could say that in front of them and then have that open oh, conversation like, but that's the thing like that's I just love it because like he's the most Christian atheist I've ever met <laughs> 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 on his tombstone and be like R.I.P. you know you went to a better place um, that you didn't expect you were going to <laughs> <laughs> yeah all, all of my atoms went back into the earth and that the cycle well. repeated the one time as well as well Dude, you... I have a science degree, man. <laughs> what have you got? I know, we've talked... Half a master's? Half a master's, full bachelor's, <laughs> actual diploma, lots of little courses. Oh, nice. Um, what does happen when we die? <laughs> Holy shit, well, well, two hours in, I am not opening <laughs> that can of worms. <laughs> Grant Rogers. No, 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 no. Grant Rogers. No, 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 no. Jenny Road That's fame. Cool. What happens when we die? The whole shout shout out to Paul Davis for the music, by the way. I was trying to work out where that fucking music was coming from, and I've just figured it out. I'm kind of surprised Wado's not here. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can park in his car, mate. It's fine. Was that, that a good enough deflection? Very good. Very Thank well you. done. I think that's a topic for a podcast. That's another yeah, podcast. That is, Holy that shit. is a whole I'm podcast. In that. I'm in that for sure. Yeah. That's another round table. But not right now. Hours into a podcast. I, I, want, I, want, I want to hear, like, soundbite answer. Go. Don't do it. Do it, you coward. Just I'm going to drink BB for the next six months. I'll Save people that. a lot of money, though. Who's really winning? Yeah. <laughs> oh, 
I want people to die in drinking jokes. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here first. Jesus Christ. Shit. Katie, Katie said, think before I speak. And I, just... <laughs> <laughs> I love that you've got advice off your girlfriend. I didn't, a, I didn't ask for it. <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> generally how you get advice from your girlfriend's <laughs> number. <laughs> so, you, so, so you didn't ask for advice from Mrs. Uh, but, but, but you, but you took right. it. <laughs> Yeah. A pinhead. No, no, I didn't take because I just fucked that up. That's right. So what does happen? I honestly don't know, and nor do I care. Well, well like, was it Jim Jeffries? When you're dead, you're fucking dead. So who cares? <laughs> it like, doesn't like, matter. But no, I'm, I'm intrigued, but I don't know. That's a good answer. Great answer. Sammy? I'm very intrigued. Wait, it's actually kind of funny because I know, I know that me and Grant come from a really different point of view. Yeah, but I'm, no, no, no. But, I'm, but I'm, I'm almost the same. Like, I'm intrigued, um, but I don't know. Like, um, yeah, but that, I think that no that's the difference between, well, in my opinion, there's, there's people yeah. that are like completely one way and completely other. Yeah. Um, they don't want to hear it. But if yeah. you admit, admit the fact that you don't know, like, you're, okay, yeah. I like, it's funny, I like the theory yeah. behind it, yeah. or where I'd love yeah. to believe in it, I love the fundamentals and the principles behind it, but then I honestly don't yeah. know. But I'm not a fundamental sort of person, and so although I have like a religious sort of belief, and it's funny too, because in the past, like, I'd try and maybe you say the cop-out thing, which is a very religious thing to say, which is like, I'm not religious, I'm <laughs> spiritual, or I'm open to kind of there being more, but like in the end, it is a religious boy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, but like, but ultimately I'm not a black and white person, so I'm not a fundamentalist and I am pretty open to things being very different from what I expect. But, um, but I do strongly believe for a few reasons, partly because I studied like science and in particular like evolutionary biology and I love it and the philosophy of science I realise we've got so far to go in terms of what humans are capable of knowing and also learning mm -hmm. and that excites me I think there's a lot of people out there who think we know way more than we do and we don't and then another part of me is like well I just yeah, potentially <laughs> I would um, disagree with that statement but carry on yeah. uh, but then uh, there's another part of me that is um, that's that's really excited about the value that um, the, the entertaining um sort of my existential belief in sort of the other um, kind of brings to my life and I think that, good way to hedge your bets I guess yeah uh, well it's not even so much that because like like seriously like genuinely like I mean I could be absolutely wrong <laughs> um, and it's not really about hedging your bets and like actually I've talked to a lot of Christians and this is true yeah. and, and probably the same with um, Muslims and Buddhists and anyone else with a fundamental belief they kind of some people are like yeah I did have a fear I'm just really sh terrified of dying and going to mm. hell or being reincarnated as I don't know like an amoeba or something um, and that's kind of like that's a really tough no, but it's a really it's tough way to live yeah exactly but it's a really I think that's a really shit way to live and I don't think that you necessarily need um, to base your morality off a religious belief but I think there's a lot of value and I mean shit anyone in book club and like you've read Sapiens there's a lot of value to what um, uh, humans capacity to um, kind of um, elaborate on an idea on a concept and kind of communally agree to head in a certain direction that's not really based in you know like atoms and molecules um, yeah. and it's what's separated us from other mm. um, other species and I think that it would be premature to throw the baby out of the bathwater um, and oh. I'm very very comfortable sitting in a place of uncertainty yeah. but I'm also happy um, uh, moving forward in that uncertainty with um, with a sense of confidence uh, that you know things are going to be okay, um, and that it's okay to kind of pursue something, even if that ends up you know leading you somewhere you didn't expect to go. I certainly wouldn't write anything off. Um, Good answer. Really answer. answer. Tommy. Same. <laughs> 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 Same. Yeah. Same. Oh, how, how can you? I can't follow that. How can you follow that? Really? Yeah, I think that. I want to follow it. <laughs> KV <laughs> thoughts. On what? Okay. <laughs> what I was looking at this yeah, no, I just got that on video. We're, we're, she was not with it. <laughs> I was looking at coasters. <laughs> They're the most expensive metallic coasters. So you don't have a, an opinion on what happens when you die? I believe that something happens, but I don't know what. But I would like to believe that something happens. I wouldn't like to believe that it's just the end. Yeah. I would like to believe that like my grandma and like other people who have passed away are still out there somewhere. Awesome. This could go for another round, but why? Why Why do you wish that or want that to happen? I don't know. It's just what I've grown up. Like, <laughs> you guys are going to hate me. But my <laughs> <laughs> so my mum has, like, she's seen grandma. And, yeah. like, my sister has said <clears throat> things, like, when she was a toddler that toddlers don't say. And, like, I know just people in my family have done Ouija boards and 
like believe in all that kind of stuff. So I've I've grown up around that stuff. Yeah. So I don't fully believe in all that, but I believe it's some. Like I believe in little parts of it. This is another podcast, right? Yeah. Yeah, no, it is. But it's it's a good it's a good way to finish this one. Palsy. It's probably the most pessimistic thing. I don't, I don't think anything happened. Nothing. Yeah, see? When you're dead, you're dead. I think nothing happened. Burn me, put me in the ground, fuck me off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's absolutely savage. Oh, wow. <laughs> that's that's wait, wait, wait. Uh, Jenny Road, uh, you want? Jenny, Jenny Road <laughs> summer, summer 2019 merch, get around it. Yeah, I'm doing a great job at the business. That's probably my favourite quote ever. That should go up on Burnley. Oh, mate. <laughs> <laughs> wait, can you please make that into a meme right now? Fuck me off. Burnley, Burnley, Burnley. Fuck me off. 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 Well, stop caring what your missus thinks, mate. You do you. No, I don't care what she thinks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now you're in trouble. That comes from a good place. Oh, Talking about sound bites, I'm going to cut that up. I'm going to edit the podcast for the first time ever and save that little bit. I wouldn't. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Simon Cooper? Um, you're a dead man. Please, oh, please man. cut that out. <laughs> I love you, Kate. <laughs> Oi, hold on, let me get, me, get you my shovel. <sighs> I'm dead in that place, aren't you, mate? How did that fucking happen? Really excavated, mate. I tried. Excavated. You dug the hole and I just jumped in. <laughs> You're like, take me now! <laughs> <laughs> I'll join you. Cannonball. <laughs> Um, I I tend to agree with what's been said. I don't know what's going to happen. I come from a, a religious family, so and I consider myself. Christian, but I'm still figuring out what I believe and what I um, what I think is going to happen. I don't. I'm not ruling anything out. I. I guess I just I. I'm still figuring out what I think. And taking lots of different opinions, lots of facts, and lots of, I guess things that aren't based in fact, and I'm sure I'll. Form an opinion at some point. When you're dead? <laughs> Maybe. Maybe just You'll let it know, I won't know. Do it again, please. Have it, please. Go. Yeah. Really? Sure. I'm, like, for me, I personally don't have an opinion, for say. It's not something that I've, like, actively thought about ever. For Till like, now. <laughs> Till, like, Ten yeah. minutes ago, yeah. basically. I love that. But like, I'm kind of like half fenced in between <clears throat> Pulsey's answer and KP's answer because at the end of the day, yeah, you're dead, you're gone, you're done, you're finished, you cut this, you're in the ground, you're burnt, you're fucked off. Basically. <laughs> <laughs> you're just going to That's going to hold me but <laughs> at, <laughs> It absolutely is. The at the same time, though, great like, like, you know, I, <laughs> my family is my family and I like my family and I'd love to see them again, personally. But at the same time, you're gone, you're dead. This is me thinking five minutes now. Like, this is the first time I've ever thought about it. <laughs> Good. I love that. Not it's nice to it's that. nice to be able to think that there is something after. Yeah. But very poetic. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Not my words. <laughs> um, but that maybe that's just optimistic yeah. and based in false hope. in fiction. Yeah. yeah. Maybe it's false hope. Like I, um, you know, like my life, like my family, like my friends. Oh, I'm gonna want to see them for forever and forever and forever. But again, at the end of the day, you go. You want to see me in the supermarket last night, Mitchell? I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) Ten minute thoughts with Mitch on (laughs) But yeah, I Uh, have episode 62. It's a new weekly segment. Ten minute thoughts with Mitch. (laughs) Personally, I've never, ever, ever, ever thought anything like that at all. Cool. I like that. I'm not at a stage in my life where that's on the front of my mind. Well, I hope you don't die soon, mate. (laughs) (laughs) We've got to back up our virtual championship, mate. We've got big fish to fry. (laughs) Oh, that's amazing. Oh, you, wow. you get to change that you've heard a sport title oh, it'll happen um, alright Lachlan come on I don't know I, like, it's the it's the cool thing about it like you might think that I'm going to be completely different to like your views and things like that but <laughs> my first no. my first no. answer no. is that I have no fucking clue right and I think that anyone that that is any more sure of the answer than that uh, is a little naive and I think that my like maybe it's hopes, maybe it's assumptions, whatever. It doesn't really matter. Like I would love to think there's something else. Like I would love to think there's a there's a higher power and there's more to it than than there is. And I think all I can all I can base my answer on is what I 
know and what I'm aware of now. And like I'm sure 12 months ago, 24 months ago, 36 months ago would have been three different answers. Um, <clears throat> but right now I kind of sit and think and I'll be like, I just can't understand how um, with what I know and this cool thing because we don't fucking know anything and I think that you're spot on and that we as a species think that we understand a lot more than we actually do Um, but in saying that we understand this significantly more than we did last year or five years ago or ten years ago so like I I I think we'll figure it out eventually Um, but in terms of what happens I tend to agree with um, Neil deGrasse Tyson's answer, um, which is very much to the tune of we end up as <coughs> uh, as a as matter which um, goes back to the which earth. goes back to the earth, and now atoms carry on and complete another circle and then you're not um, dead. another cycle and the mic is not just but done. but in terms of like my my soul if I'm going to use a word like that, which I think is just consciousness or subconscious or whatever, um, I think that ceases to exist. I would love to think that it doesn't. Um, but I think at the end of the day, yeah, it's just, that's it. Lights off. Um, and the next generation and things like that moves on with, with, with life and then they go through exactly the same thing. I think we... Are we overvalue our importance in this world and I think our insignificance our insignificance is uh, what why like the our insignificance is the most important thing about us as a species um, and I think our ability to become what we are as a species just c- comes from lots of luck and lots of uh, circumstance and, and things like that so I don't know it's, a, it's an interesting one and it's something that I am really looking forward to finding out in the 150 to 200 years when I do finally pass away. And on yeah. that note, what does everyone at home think? Leave us a <laughs> email. I think they've been very Smooth. Smooth. Very smooth. I like it. Yeah, good. On that uh, note, what else? Wait. Share it, subscribe. Um, what share else? if you like it. Even if you don't, subscribe. We hope you like listening to it. If you... Are someone that thinks you've got a story to tell, if you're just a normal human, or if you know normal people and they have a story to tell. Even abnormal people are Get in touch. I, I would Get like to hear some abnormal people. Get in touch. It's Lachlan yeah. Wallace at Vertisperformance.com. Yeah, can, you inv- can, you, can you invite some excellent, like, yeah, abnormally yeah, amazing that. people on yeah. the podcast? Yeah. Um, some... I, can, I can get, like, my head brewer, Blake, will just blow your mind. Yeah. He's uh, super He's on my list, mate. He's on my list. He's super Very abnormal. abnormal. <laughs> like, I hope he's into this. He's just so left and centre. That's good. All right, I said I wish we were able to be bat. Here's, here's the thing, right? There is wait, no, wait, wait, wait. Be better. There is no <laughs> such thing as a normal person, right? Like, yeah, every, exactly. Everyone. Exactly. Why do you say that at the intro of your podcast, then? Because <laughs> Why would you lie to everybody? Bang! Bang! <laughs> because no because everyone has a story to tell, right? You say normal, especially but normal people. But what's normal to me is not normal to you, is it? I don't like these. Well, I don't know. Why do like, you say what's, it? What's, what's Can of worms. What's, <laughs> what's normal to Blake is not normal to Grant, right? Sure. Thanks. And on that note, <laughs> cheers, cheers to you all. Thanks for listening. Thanks for being a part of it. Here's to another 52 episodes. Happy birthday. Woo! Yeah!